Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the first episode of the story, in which Naruto discovers a bracelet that allows him to wield the weapons and gear of legendary heroes while looking at the Forbidden Scroll. Naruto uses this power to become the ultimate ninja of the elemental nations. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. In the clearing of a forest located in Kanoha or the Hidden Leaf Village, a boy sits reading a large scroll. His name is Uzumaki Naruto, a pariah of the village, he has been abused and mistreated ever since he was born. He aspires to become Hokage so that he could protect the people he cares about as well as gain recognition from the people around him. However he failed the graduation exam at the Ninja Academy twice with yesterday being his due to not being able to properly bunch in no jutsu. One of his teachers Mizuki told him of a makeup exam which involves taking a scroll from the Hokage's office and learning a technique in order to pass. Well I was able to learn the Kage Bunshin no Jutsu but maybe learning another technique would increase my chances of passing this makeup exam, thought Naruto who was wearing a rust orange jump that just screams, I am right here. Kill me, and green goggles with blue ninja sandals. As he goes through the scroll, Naruto gets a paper cut and mistakenly drips his blood on a seal that releases a box and a small scroll that drop to the floor. Curious about the box, Naruto opens the box which reveals a bracelet inside. It is silver in color with a dragon and phoenix motif on the metal with a large red gem. When Naruto reached out touched it, he forgot that he was using the very hand that was bleeding slightly which a drop of blood fell from and onto the bracelet. Upon making contact with the blood, the bracelet glowed brightly, forcing Naruto to close his eyes from being blinded. When he opened his eyes, Naruto noticed that the bracelet was attached to his left wrist, no matter how hard he tried he couldn't get it off until he remembered the small scroll and opened it to find out what is going on. To who anyone who reads this, inside the box contains the Jigen no Tamashi no Rinku, this weapon has been created by the gods of different worlds to serve the person who is pure of heart and a sense of justice. Should anyone of evil intentions touch it, their soul will be destroyed without hesitation but should a person who is pure of heart drop his blood onto the bracelet, it will bond with the person and can never be taken off until his death or when he falls to darkness which results in his soul being destroyed. The Jigen no Tamashi no Rinku has the ability to grant the wielder the weapons or gears of legendary heroes from different dimensions. The level of their power depends on the amount of energy the user possesses, the more energy the wielder sends to the bracelet then he is granted more access to the potent power of the weapon. We hope that the wielder will use the Jigen no Tamashi no Rinku for the salvation of his world instead of its destruction. Naruto was surprised that he now has the most powerful weapon in the world but at the same time he was happy. As he was about to examine the bracelet, Naruto felt someone come into the clearing. It was his other teacher from the academy, Yumino Iruka. Looks. Like you found me Iruka Sensei, I only had time to learn one jutsu from the scroll, said Naruto with a foxy grin. He has been practicing out here until he wore himself out, thought Iruka looking at the blonde. Anyway if I perform the jutsu properly then you would let me pass right? Those are the rules, anyone who learns a jutsu from the scroll passes, said Naruto with excitement. Iruka looked shocked, who told you about this, he asked with tension. Mizuka sensei told me about it, I thought that since you are here, you knew as well, said Naruto. Hearing a sound from behind, Iruka pushed Naruto out of the way only to be hit by Kanai which was thrown. Like I thought, you planned all this Mizuki. The said ninja laughed out loud, you were always too smart for your own good Iruka, now Naruto hand over the scroll. What's going on? asked Naruto looking at the two teachers in confusion. Naruto. Don't let him have the scroll. It contains the forbidden techniques that could destroy our village, he used you so that he could steal it, said Iruka. Don't listen to him Naruto, Iruka has been keeping secrets from you, him along with the other villagers that concerns you, don't you wonder why they hate you so much, said Mizuki with an evil smile. Mizuki don't tell him. It's a village secret. 
What is this secret that everybody knows except me? asked Naruto desperately wanting to find out why he was hated. It's a secret that you should never be told, said Mizuki with his smile growing wider. Mizuki don't tell him, cried out Iruka. What is it, tell me already, said Naruto. No one's supposed to tell you that you have the Kyubi no Kitsune sealed inside you. You are the one who attacked the village twelve years ago, the one who killed Iruka's parents, you are the nine-tailed fox, shouted out Mizuki laughing maniacally. Naruto just stood there stunned at being told the reason why he was hated. He could find sense in the reason they mistreated him. Die. You demon, shouted out Mizuki before throwing a large shuriken at Naruto who was still in shock to move until Iruka tackled him to the ground and received the shuriken on his back. WWH why did you save me? You were supposed to hate me as well, said Naruto looking at Iruka in surprise. It's because I know how it feels to be alone, like you I used to play pranks and fool around just to get attention but deep inside I felt alone which is why I wanted to be there for you, said Iruka amidst tears. Naruto looked at him for a moment before running off with the scroll despite Iruka calling for him. You are so pathetic Iruka, crying for that demon. I am going to kill the demon brat and get the forbidden scroll before I come back to kill you, said Mizuki before taking off. Naruto was running through the forest when Iruka came beside him. Naruto don't listen to Mizuki's lies. Pass me the scroll so that we can keep it safe from him, said Iruka. Naruto leapt at Iruka and slammed him to the ground before sitting down and leaning against a tree. Iruka disappeared in a puff of smoke to reveal Mizuki, how did you know that I wasn't the real Iruka? Naruto smirked at him before disappearing in a puff of smoke as well to reveal Iruka, that's because I am the real Iruka, nearby was Naruto hiding behind a tree with the scroll in his hands. Why do you defend that demon brat? If you were the Kyubi, I am sure that you would keep the scroll for its power, said Mizuki. Yeah you right, said Iruka. Naruto bent his head down, like I thought Iruka sees me like that just like the rest, thought Naruto and was about to fall into despair when he heard Iruka's next words. The demon would do that but not Naruto, he knows the feeling of pain and is a hard worker if you look through his clumsiness. He is a ninja of the Hidden Leaf Village, he is Uzumaki Naruto, said Iruka with sincerity in his voice to which Naruto was struggling to hold back his tears. I thought to kill you later but now I've my mind. You will die now, said Mizuki running in to finish Iruka until Naruto jumped in and landed a headbutt into him, knocking him back. If you as much as take a step anywhere near Iruka Sensei, I will kill you. Naruto declared with a glare leveled at Mizuki. Smart talk demon brat, I can finish you in one move, said Mizuki. Just try it team. I'll return it a thousand times more, said Naruto while crossing his index fingers before crying out the jutsu. Kage Bunshin no jutsu, a large plume of smoke appeared and cleared to reveal copies of himself only that they are solid. Iruka was shocked that his student was able to use a high-ranked jutsu with no issue. Okay everyone, attack, said Naruto with his clones charging at Mizuki. However Mizuki was able to defend himself and defeated the clones with his kunai. Is that all you got, you demon brat? Mizuki taunted as he slowly approached Naruto and Iruka. Damn, what else can I do to beat this guy, my clones aren't enough, thought Naruto until the bracelet glowed and he heard a feminine voice. Do you wish to use this power to protect the person you care about, the voice asked Naruto. He was confused at first but he confirmed. Yes I want to protect my precious people no matter what even if it kills me, he said to the voice. Then channel your chakra to the bracelet and yell out the word that comes into your mind, said the voice. As Naruto did so he heard the voice of young man saying something and yelled out what he said. Journey to the west, he yelled. The bracelet glowed brightly and when it faded, it revealed Naruto holding a golden staff, as he held the weapon his head was filled with information of how to use it. He smirked at Mizuki, get ready Mizuki team, 
I am about to go all ape on you, Naruto dashed in spinning the staff before planting it into the floor and vaulting off it and landing a fierce kick on Mizuki's face. Grabbing the staff and spinning it again, Naruto began. Bashing Mizuki continuously until he was a mess of bruises, broken teeth and bones. This is the end, said Naruto sending Chakra into the staff, increasing its size and swung at him, sending Mizuki crashing into a tree knocked out. Now that was a home run, Naruto said laughing. What weapon is this, he thought before the voice answered him. It is the golden staff which was once wielded by Sun Wukong who goes by the title Great Sage equaling heaven with this weapon, he defeated many soldiers of heaven until he was imprisoned by Buddha but was later released to escort a monk on a journey to the west, wow. So I wielded the weapon of the legendary monkey king, thought Naruto excitedly after the cudgel disappeared from his hands. Yes and you can wield the weapons of other heroes as you grow stronger but for now you should check on your sensei, said the voice. Naruto immediately turned to check on Iruka, Iruka sensei are you alright? he asked with concern. Yeah, but come over here and close your eyes, I need to give you something, said Iruka while smiling. Naruto did as Iruka requested. Okay you can open them now, when he did, Naruto noticed that Iruka wasn't wearing his forehead protector anymore but rather he is. Congratulations Naruto. You are now a ninja, Iruka said smiling Naruto couldn't hold back his tears anymore and embraced his teacher. After leaving a battered Mizuki to the ANBU and dropping Iruka at the hospital to be healed of his injuries, Naruto went to the Hokage Tower to get some answers from his surrogate grandfather. Upon reaching the door to his office he opened it to reveal the Hokage sitting behind his desk as if knowing that he was coming thanks to his crystal ball which enables him to see everything within the village. Gigi, could you explain why I wasn't told that I had the nine-tailed fox that had attacked the village sealed into me till now? asked Naruto with a look in his eyes which spoke of anger and betrayal to which made the old man feel guilty. I had set up a law to make the people not speak of the event to which the penalty is death and I didn't tell you about the fox in order for you to have a normal childhood, said Saratobi, but this rather angered the young blonde. You may have put this idea into theory thinking it would work but it didn't come out well in practical. Because every parent told their children to stay away from me, everyone looks at me like I am not supposed to exist, shops sell low-quality items at ridiculous prices when I try to buy something and I nearly get killed on my birthdays by angry mobs if not for Inu saving me every time. So tell if this is what one would call a normal childhood, shouted Naruto. If the Hokage wasn't feeling guilty yet then he is certainly feeling in huge amounts compared to when Naruto eats ramen at Ichiraku and he still hasn't revealed to whole truth to his surrogate grandson yet. And I am sure you know who my parents are since you didn't tell me about this, so could you tell me the reason why before I lose whatever little trust one have in you left, said Naruto with tears in his eyes. The reason I didn't tell you the truth was because your father was a powerful ninja who had a lot enemies both inside and outside the village, if they are to find out about your existence they would stop at nothing just to kill you in a form of revenge and I intended to tell you when you when you reach Chunin rank, said Sarutobi with sadness in his eyes. Trying to understand his reason, Naruto looked around the office until his eyes set on the portrait of the Hokages especially the one with a blonde hair, upon closer study, Naruto had a look of realization and a sad smile as he put all the pieces together. The fourth was my father wasn't he, said Naruto with tears flowing down his face, the Hokage had a look of shock at how the young figured out the truth. But how did you know that he was your father, asked the old man, Naruto laughed at him. That's easy, we both share the same blonde hair aside from the Yamanaka clan, if you remove my whisker marks I would look like a younger version of himself. Mostly importantly, he couldn't bring himself to have a parent to offer their child when he could trust his own to protect the village and control the fox's power, I'm just surprised that those dumb villagers couldn't pick up the resemblance between the two of us, said Naruto. What do you think of your father for sealing the beast into you? Are you angry at him for that? asked Sarutobi hoping that he wouldn't turn on the village after learning the truth. I would be lying if I said that I am not angry at him for sealing the fox inside me 
making me the scapegoat for the hatred of the villagers but I have reasons to believe that he holds great love and trust in me to use this power to protect the village and the people precious to me but I will give him a punch to the gut but aside from that, I am happy and proud to be his son, said Naruto with a foxy grin to which the old Hokage smiled as well. If that's the case I will also tell you that your mother was Kushina Uzumaki who was from the Uzumaki clan of the village hidden in the whirlpools, they were well known for their fuinjutsu and their strong vitality and longevity, however out of fear, the villages of Iwa and Kumo combined their forces to attack your mother's village, wiping them not without losing a majority of their forces and we who were your mother's allies arrived to send them packing. Kushina moved to Kanoha where she met Minato who was your father and later on secretly got married. She was also the container for the fox before you, I don't know how the fox got out of the seal that night since your father was there when she was giving birth to you, said Saratobi. Naruto was surprised at hearing the history of his clan but felt proud of his parents nonetheless. Okay Gigi, I forgive you for keeping this from me as I finally. Understanding the reason for it, but is there anything I need to know so that I wouldn't get mad at you as I really hate getting angry at the people that I care about, said Naruto looking at the Hokage with complete trust. Well I've passed my obstacle course so now it's their turn to cross since I am now out of his line of fire, he thought, yes there is, your parents had made Jiraiya and Tsunade who are members of the Sanin to be your godparents, upon hearing that he had godparents who weren't around to take care of him he became extremely furious. If I ever run into them, I'm gonna pound them into the ground regardless of their status, Naruto thought. GG I'll find my own way to deal with them when they show up, we need to talk about the Jigen no Tamashi no Rinku which I'm now in possession of, indeed but I don't much about it so could you explain what it does since it's attached to you now, said Saratobi with a look of curiosity. Well the bracelet would only allow a person with a pure soul to wear it as the soul of evil person would be destroyed upon wearing it, it allows me to gain access to the weapons and gears of legendary heroes and warriors from different worlds and dimensions. The bracelet won't come unless I die or fall to darkness so I need to train in order to wield its powers, said Naruto to which the Hokage nodded in understanding. Okay then, the team matchups will be postponed till next three weeks so you can use this time to adapt to it and if there anything comes up I will inform you, just watch out for the civilian council as they will do anything to get their hands on it especially Danzo, he has been trying to make you into a weapon ever since you had the fox sealed in you, said Saratobi. Thanks for the heads up, just know that I will protect the village and no matter what happens, see ya, said Naruto before leaving for his apartment. When he reached his home, he took off his jumpsuit whilst thinking of getting new clothes to replace the monstrosity and went to sleep. Mindscape when he opened his eyes, Naruto discovered that he was in a sewer and that he was standing in front of a large gate with a paper written seal on it. This must be where the fox is sealed and where I meet it as well, I should be able to get some answers from the fox, thought Naruto. So I finally get to meet my jailer, I was wondering when I would see you, said a deep voice as footsteps was heard and a pair of red eyes appeared from behind the gate. Naruto was stunned and a bit frightened to see the figure which revealed to be a giant orange fox with nine tails. To what I owe this visit from the one who imprisons me or have you come to release me, it said with a sneer. I am not here to trade insults fox, I want to know from your point of view as I'm sure that you would have left the village instead of attack it, said Naruto, the fox was surprised as it thought he would have started blaming it for the bad things that happened to him. And demanded its power. Before I was sealed into you, your mother was originally my container but on that night a masked man attacked your parents and forcefully extracted me from your mother leaving her to die, the next I know, I was looking into his eye which had a Sharingan sending me into a primal rage to lay waste to the village, your father summoned the Shinigami to seal me into you in exchange for his own soul. I didn't mean to attack your village at all, said the fox with a sad look. After hearing what the fox said, Naruto thought deeply, the only person who could control the nine-tailed fox would be Uchiha Madara but he is supposed to be dead in the battle against the first Hokage or it might be someone who is impersonating him, then I have to get stronger to be able to face him but how? I believe I can help, said a voice which sounds feminine. Naruto and the fox quickly turned to the direction of the voice surprised that someone else aside from them is here. 
A figure appeared to reveal a young woman wearing a white robe with sandals and her long white hair reaching to her knees. Hello I am the spirit of the Jigen no Tamashi no Rinku and I am here to serve as your guardian and you are my master, she then realized who she is. You are the voice that showed me how to use the bracelet to protect Iruka Sensei. Thank you very much for helping me back then, said Naruto happily. I am merely doing my duty to serve my master, said the spirit with a smile. Don't you have name? Aside from that, Naruto turned to the fox, what is your name? I can tell that you have one as far as I can tell that the nine-tailed fox is just a title, which surprised the two entities especially the fox as none asked for his name but rather his power. Maybe being sealed in this kid isn't so bad after all, he wants to be friends instead of treating me like an object unlike the others before him, the fox thought, well my name is Kurama and you are the first human to ask for my name, Naruto smiled brightly at learning of his new friend's name and they turned to the spirit who had a confused look on her face. Well I don't have a name since I am merely your guardian, she said to which Naruto had a look of surprise. Well you need a name as it proves your existence, anyway let me think of one, said Naruto remembering how the villagers looked at him. I got it. Your name is now Chinami as it means wisdom and knowledge since you know everything about the power of the bracelet, also don't call me master as I don't like being called that, very well then I will call you Naritosuma, said the newly named Chinami who is inwardly happy at having a name. Okay that's fine. I am happy to meet the both of you Kurama and Chinami, said Naruto with a foxy grin to which they both returned a smile as well. By the way Kit, do you know that time goes slower in the mindscape than in the outside world such that a year in here is a week outside so you can use this opportunity. To train, said Kurama as he didn't want Naruto to be helpless now that they are partners along with Chinami. Kurama-san is right Naruto-sama, due to the sabotage at the academy, you are not truly ready for the outside world, said Chinami to which Naruto had a downcast look, however after looking at the conditioning of your body, I know exactly what kind of training you need so I am summoning the spirits of legendary heroes to be your teachers. Normally training in your mindscape would affect you mentally but with the power of the Jigen no Tamashi no Rinku I can make it affect you physically although. You would get very hungry whenever you wake up, thanks Chinamican, I am ready for the training so you can summon them, said Naruto with a look of determination. Very well then, I will be summoning them now, said Chinami. Soon four figures appeared before them and Naruto looked at each of them in awe. The first is a man who wears a black sleeveless shirt, a blue scarf, blue ninja pants with six skulls at his waist and a large nodachi strapped at his back. This is Kisuk a ninja from a different world who is the master swordsman of the Oboro Sly which enables one to use Muramesa blades due to the wielder being made immune to its bloodlust and violent desires which suits you because of your pure heart, said Chinami to which Naruto nodded in understanding since he might face swordsmen in the future. The next person is a man wearing a sleek black sleeveless jumpsuit with minor padding, arms and shin guards, fingerless gloves, a hood and scarf covering most of his face, Tabi boots and a forehead protector with insignia of a peregrine falcon and has a Japanese sword strapped to his back. This is Ryu Hayabusa, known in his world as the Dragon Ninja, he will teach you the way of the ninja which is a bit different from what you know but can be combined with the teachings in the future. The third person is a man with long black hair who is shirtless with a red headband, red and black leggings with a dragon design, studded wrist guards and black kung fu shoes, Shaolin monk's outfit. The next person is Liu Kong, a Shaolin monk and a previous champion of a tournament known as Mortal Kombat to defend his world. He will teach you in martial arts as your current fighting style is very poor and could get you killed, Naruto was annoyed but let it go since the person who taught him was Mizuki and he has been dealt with accordingly. And the last person is a man wearing a red and black skin tight body with a mask, he has two swords on his back, holsters all over his body that hold strange angular weapons that Naruto has never seen before. The last person here is Wade Wilson also known as Deadpool, usually a mercenary but then joined several groups that protected his world, despite his sanity being questionable, he is an expert on artillery and will teach you how to use the weapons which we call guns, said to which Naruto nodded excited at being able to get strong with these men being his teachers.
I will teach you various chakra exercises as well as being able to use my chakra however the seal only lets me give you a certain amount as the fourth gave your godfather the key to the seal, I have a bit of knowledge for Fuenjutsu so I'll teach you that as well, said Kurama. Thanks for everything, let's begin with the training, soon the elemental nations will learn that if you up against a maelstrom, you will spiral out of control, said Naruto, with that he began his training to become a ninja which enemies will think twice before challenging him. It has been an eventful three weeks since Naruto began his training within his mindscape with Kurama the Nine-Tailed Fox, Chinami the spirit of the Jigen no Tamashi no Rinku and the spirits of the heroes that were summoned to be his teachers. Kurama had him to perform various chakra exercises so as to improve his chakra control which was extremely poor due to the fact that he has enormous chakra reserves. So Naruto started by doing tree walking which involved using chakra on his feet to stick to the tree, at first he could barely take five steps before he loses his grip and falls but Kurama told him that the shadow clone technique has a special ability whereby the memories of a dispelled clone is sent to the original making it an a rank jutsu with only it requiring a large amount of chakra being the drawback. With the help of the shadow clones Naruto was able to perform the tree walking with no Issues along with water walking, senban balancing and sticking a leaf to his forehead much to the surprise of the fox and spirit, they came to the conclusion that Naruto learns quickly by body memory. Soon Naruto's chakra control reached up to Jounin level and his speed at performing hand seals makes it difficult for a Sharingan user to copy without error. Before indulging in Fuenjutsu, Chinami had Naruto go to the library to gain knowledge so he went under a henge and collected books based on history, biology, math, ninjutsu and cooking to make up for the lack of education back at the academy. Afterwards, Naruto practiced on Fuenjutsu which he has noticed to have a great talent for leading him to make strong seals for storage, suppression, explosives and much more. Before attempting on the ninjutsu, Kurama and Chinami checked for his elemental affinity which turned out to be fire, water, wind and lightning much to their surprise sharing the same thought some people are going to regret neglecting or underestimating this guy meanwhile throughout the land several people felt a chill go down their spines and wished that they wouldn't come across what made the feel that way. Thanks to his now excellent chakra control, Naruto performed the ninjutsu with no error and even created some of his own ranging from D to a rank with the intention of teaching them to his trusted comrades and future students, hint hint. Before Naruto began his training with the heroes, Chinami and Kurama had him confront his inner darkness which is where he met his dark self that he had locked deep within himself. Flashback, hey kit before you start your training with the heroes, Chinami and I decided that you should face the inner darkness that you locked away within yourself, said Kurama to which Chinami nodded in agreement but Naruto was confused. I don't understand, I've never had dark feelings as far I could remember since I never felt angry or vengeful to the villagers, said Naruto. The reason would be because you subconsciously keep those feelings deep inside and you put on a mask to protect yourself. Your mindscape represents your emotions hence the sewer represents the unshed tears, sorrow and loneliness, said Chinami with a sad look as Naruto had a look of realization. Kit you would have to face your inner darkness otherwise in the long run you might end up destroying yourself and the people you would come to care about, said Kurama. Naruto thought deeply about what the fox said and agreed at what he said. Okay then, I would like to face my darkness or I will regret anything I might do in the future, said Naruto with a determined look. Immediately he heard footsteps coming from behind and turned to see a figure emerged from a hall which a person who looked exactly like him except with black eyes and red irises. Who are you? said Naruto tensing for a possible battle, the look-alike chuckled darkly and responded an evil voice like how hollow Ichigo talks, I'm hurt that you don't recognize me after all I've been with you this whole time since you were born, the person sneered, I am the embodiment of your dark emotions, you can call me your true self while you are just a mere shell, Naruto realized that this is his darkness which had taken a physical form. Why are you even bothering yourself to become Hokage to protect these villagers who hold nothing but hate for you, I'm sure they would betray you immediately in a bad situation, when I take over your body I'll become exactly what they fear and destroy the village besides who needs them. Angered by what he said, Naruto sped through a series of hand seals and launched an attack, wind style, 
great breakthrough, a huge gust of wind sped towards the dark persona, dark Naruto smirked and performed his own hand seals, fire style, grand fireball, and shot a large fireball which consumed the wind and became larger forcing Naruto to jump out of way and launched another attack, lightning style, lightning bolt, and stretched out an open palm releasing a surge of lightning but dark Naruto. Defended himself wind style, gale claw, by forming a claw made out of wind which covered his hand and slashed at the lightning attack therefore cancelling it out. My turn, said Dark Naruto going through some hand seals, water style, water dragon bullet, launching dragon made out of water at Naruto, shit, quickly performing some hand seals quickly, fire style, fire dragon. Bullet, and released a dragon made out of fire and sent it at the water dragon which resulted in both cancelling each other out leaving behind a veil of steam. Naruto knew that he had to keep a sharp lookout since he has lost sight of his dark self, sensing a presence from his left, he quickly ducked to avoid a roundhouse kick and responded with a rising knee which was deflected and received a backhand that sent him stumbling backwards. Naruto tried to create a distance to recover but Dark Naruto kept laying the pressure all the while laughing maniacally, see how weak you are. Is this the strength you can muster? You're better off being a civilian than a ninja. Ha 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 ha. Both blondes kept exchanging punches and kicks until Naruto launched a high kick which was a mistake as Dark Naruto performed a leg sweep, knocking him to the ground and quickly mounted him and began pounding at Naruto's face while Kurama and Chinami watched with worry. Like I told you, you're just a shell and a weakling, let's see how you like it when you are locked away and watch another person walk around without a care in the world, said Dark Naruto as he continued punching at Naruto. While struggling to escape, when Naruto heard what his dark half said, a sudden thought came across his mind before channeling Chakra to his hands and pushed him off sending Dark Naruto a short distance before getting up, all bruised. Dark Naruto quickly got up ready to defend himself but was surprised to see Naruto simply standing looking at him with a sad look in his eyes. I understand it now, why you truly exist and I foolishly kept you locked away which is why you hate me so much, said Naruto. Dark Naruto looked confused for a moment before sneering at Naruto again. So you final understand that I am your true self and that I deserve to be the dominant one while you should just disappear, said Dark Naruto to which Naruto shook his head in negative. You're right and wrong at the same time, you were helping the both of us by taking in all of the negative emotions so that we can both stay sane and yet I rejected you, you are me and I am you, we are two halves of a whole, light can't exist without darkness and darkness needs the light as both need each other to maintain the balance, said Naruto. Dark Naruto glared angrily at him. What are you talking about? These villagers will surely betray and hurt us. So you're saying that if we stop hating them then they will stop hating us. Don't make me laugh, shouted Dark Naruto. You forget about Iruka Sensei who doesn't hate us for what we contain and don't forget that as ninjas we are meant to endure, said Naruto smiling. What about me then? Where do I fit in all this, shouted Dark Naruto while charging at Naruto, what am I supposed to do, he launched a punch but Naruto moved in and hugged him. Like I said, you are me and I am you which is why I say this, said Naruto who held on more tightly, I'm sorry for rejecting you and. I acknowledge you, Dark Naruto was stunned for a moment and closed his eyes which began to release tears before opening them to reveal cerulean blue eyes similar to Naruto's and hugged back. Thank you and I'm counting on you, bro, said the now awakened Naruto who turned into sparkles of light and entered into Naruto. I won't disappoint you, said Naruto who now feels complete, so this is who I truly am, I am Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, son of Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki a ninja of the Hidden Leaf Village, partner of Kurama the Nine-Tailed Fox and the chosen wielder of the Jigen no Tamashi no Rinku, a bright light shone upon the mindscape and faded to reveal a large forest with a lake and a clearing at the center of the forest. What just happened, asked Naruto to which Chinami answered. Due to making peace with your inner darkness, the mindscape changed to represent your now awakened self as the forest represents your newfound peace, said Chinami. Naruto nodded in understanding, now we can resume with your training, then she summoned Kisuk, Liu Kong, Ryu Hayabusa and Deadpool. Hey kid, 
Congrats on making peace with your darkness as it makes it much easier to use both yours and my chakra but I can provide only a certain amount until we get the key to release the seal and then we can merge our chakra together which give us a power which only a container who is in harmony with his bijou can achieve, said Karama to which Naruto smiled. Thanks and I need to settle some things with a few before things get out of hand, said Naruto with a worried look that Karama mirrored. You mean those three girls? I can understand that but what about him, said Karama to which Naruto responded. When the time comes, I will know what to do so until then, I have to train, said Naruto before walking to the heroes. Flashback end after making peace with his inner darkness, Naruto discovered some hidden memories back when he was younger and noticed that there are others who cared for him aside from Iruka and promised to meet them again. In his training with Liu Kang, he learnt the fighting style from the former Earth Realm champion including his signature moves which was the bicycle kick, flying kick, dragon fireball and the dragon uppercut. He was also taught the signature moves of Jax, Kung Lao, and Johnny Cage saying that he wants their legacy to be continued, after much training Naruto was able to create his own brutality and fatality but would have to train harder to discover his animality. Liu Kong was impressed with how Naruto had taken to his fighting as if it was made for him since his attacks are always come out of nowhere in his spars hence living up to the title number one most unpredictable ninja. Well done young warrior, with this your training is over, all you need now is experience and resolution, said Liu Kong to which Naruto bowed in respect. Thank you for teaching me your ways master Liu Kong, I will honor them and use this. Strength to protect my village and the people I care about, said Naruto, Liu Kong nodded in approval before fading away. Next teacher was Kisuk who began to train him in the secret arts of the Oboro style. Naruto took to the sword very quickly and easily and wondered why it felt like he had been using the sword his whole life, Kurama pointed out that his mother was one of the powerful kenjutsu master known in history that could challenge the swordsmen of the mist and still come out on top and so must have inherited her talent for the sword much to Naruto's joy for having another connection to his family. After much training and help of the shadow clones, Naruto was able to utilize the Oboro style with the long blade and katana but wasn't able to use the secret arts due to the blades that were sold in the shops being incompatible and would break that was until he came across a certain shrine. Flashback Naruto was at the training ground, holding a katana in front of a large wooden stump, secret arts, log chop, he performed a descending vertical slash upon the stump but the blade broke halfway through the slash. Damn it, these blades just aren't strong enough to be used for the Oboro style like you said Master Kasuk, said a frustrated Naruto. Indeed, the Oboro style requires a Muramesa blade or a much more powerful sword in order to perform the secret arts, said Kisuk from the Mindscape. Naruto signed in disappointment and began to return to the apartment to cook some dinner before going to bed. He was passing by a waterfall when Kisuk called him to stop. Naruto wait, I sense something from behind the waterfall and it feels familiar, said Kisuk. Naruto approached the waterfall and noticed that there is a well-hidden cave behind it and so he went through it. Walking through the tunnel which finally revealed an end, Naruto came across a set of stairs which led to a shrine where a long blade and katana lay upon a pedestal both that emit a strong energy foreign to Naruto. So this is where they went, said Kisuk. What are these blades Master Kisuk, asked Naruto with curiosity. The long blade is the Tsukiyatoshi while the katana is the Mume Tamanu, these blades are some of the most powerful blades to have been forged by Muramesa. With the help of these blades, I was able to slay a corrupt shogun who possessed a blade that contained the spirit of an evil Inagami, in the middle of the battle the shogun created a portal to trap me but I avoided it however the blades fell into the portal and somehow ended up in your world. You can take them as you are immune to the bloodlust thanks to the Oboro style but you must know that when a Muramesa breaks, it can repair itself when sheathed for a while, said Kisuk to which Naruto nodded in understanding and took the blades, strapping Tsukiyatoshi to his back and the Mume Tamanu to his waist. Flashback end after discovering the Muramesa blades, Naruto could now perform the secret. Arts without worrying about breakages and soon he became a master swordsman in his own right, he made a seal which stores and releases them when chakra is applied. 
Soon it was Kasuk's time to leave, it is time for me to leave my dear student, be sure to show your enemies the futility of facing against the Oboro style and make the predecessor of the style swell with pride, said the ninja. Thank you for taking me as your student master Kasuk as I will surely display the prowess of the Oboro style, said Naruto bowing to his master before he disappeared as well. Next for training was Ryu Hayabusa who began to teach him the ways of the ninja in from his world, since he had mastered the basics Naruto was able to perform various techniques such as maneuvering through various obstacles using the forest within his mindscape and the buildings in the village for training and was also trained in stealth which was easy due to his time as a prankster, obliteration to chinks and ninpo which is the ninjutsu from Ryu's world. Naruto was also taught the dragon ninja's signature techniques which is the flying swallow and izuna drop as well as how to wield a bow staff, dual katana, claws, scythe, nunchucks and bows with arrows. Soon the training was over and the time for the master ninja to leave had come. I wish you good fortune and hope that you do not stray from the path of the true ninja, said Ryu Hayabusa to which Naruto bowed in respect. Thank you for being my master and I shall uphold the code which a true ninja follows, said Naruto before the dragon ninja faded away. Soon the final course of training involved Deadpool also as the merc with the mouth, he had Naruto improve his accuracy by at first standing and aiming then it went to throwing while on the move and to deflect incoming projectiles by intercepting or by blocking with his own. After completing that section of the training, Deadpool introduced Naruto to the world of guns which he took to it excitedly although the initial introduction was amusing. Flashback, now it's time for me to introduce you to one of the most finest weaponry ever known to man and that is guns, said Deadpool which Naruto looked in confusion. What exactly is a gun master, asked Naruto to which Deadpool looked in shocked look, if that's possible through his mask. You mean you don't know what a gun is? asked Deadpool whose head was down and his shoulders were shaking, Naruto shook his head in negative. It was barely a minute before Deadpool raised his head screamed out, this is blasphemy. How could you not know one of mankind's greatest invention in the whole fucking world? This requires an emergency education. Deadpool grabbed Naruto and ran to a small clearing, sitting him on a rock before pulling out an angular object from his holster, this my dear student is a gun, one of man's greatest source of war, this artistic piece of work can launch small metal projectiles at high speeds and long distance. Leaving lethal damage on any sucker stupid enough make you use on. Hold the gun, feel the gun, caress the gun, love the gun, the gun is your friend, your soul mate and if any jerk-off who tries to separate you from your soul mate then separate his soul from his soon-to-be rotten corpse. Flashback end after a sugar-coated history of guns, am sure Deadpool is a gun nut, Naruto was trained to use various artillery such as handguns, machine guns, grenade launchers, bazooka, shotguns and many more, then was taught the art of gunkata which involved close combat while using guns in battle. However training with Deadpool was not without side effects, Naruto now says wisecracks to anger his opponents, expect a bit those in the future chapters, and ways of interrogation much to Kurama's amusement and Chinami's discomfort. Then it was go time for the merc with mouth. Looks like it's time for me to ship off kiddo, just be to raise some hell while scoring some girls as well as driving some baddies to the loony bin, said Deadpool with a smirk, again if it's possible with mask. Sure thing sensei, they will definitely want to die be before I even get to them, said Naruto with a sadistic at the thought, with that Deadpool faded away thus officially ending the training. Afterwards, Naruto spent the rest of the days practicing with his fighting style, ninjutsu and oboro but was given the last day as a free day to take a photo for his ninja biography and visit the third Hokage but before he left, Naruto was called into the mindscape. Hey guys, what's up, said Naruto with a foxy grin to which the tenant smiled. Hello Naratosama, we called you here to inform you of a discovery we made recently said Chinami. Which is what? asked Naruto curiously. Well Kit, we discovered that if I send my chakra to you while using a legendary weapon or gear, it increases its power or grants you access to a higher level in its power, said Kurama which Naruto had an excited look, it will only last for a short time leaving you exhausted after use, I understand, 
then I'll make it my trump card anyway I'm on my way to see Gigi so I'll see you guys later, said Naruto and with that he exited from the mindscape and went on his way to the Hokage. After taking the photo, a normal one surprisingly enough, he went to meet his surrogate grandfather. Hello Gigi. I've missed you, said Naruto grinning, Sarutobi smiled and returned happy at seeing the young blonde. Ah Naruto, it has been a while since I've last seen you, I was getting worried, said the old Hokage. Sorry about that, I was training as well as learning more about the bracelet, said Naruto who was rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. I understand just be careful when using it as you would draw enemies to yourself, said Sarutobi. While they were talking, the door burst open to reveal an eight-year-old boy wearing a helmet and a long scarf. Prepare yourself old man for today is the day I defeat you and take. The hat, for I will be the next Hokage, shouted the boy as he charged at the Hokage but tripped on his own scarf, landing face first on the floor to which Naruto and the old Hokage sweat dropped. Naruto was about to ask who the boy was when the said person got up and pointed a finger at him, hey you tripped me, shouted the boy annoying Naruto to grab the boy by the scarf. No one tripped you but yourself you little brat. Naruto snapped, it was at that moment when a man wearing black sunglasses entered to see the scene. Release the boy for he is the honorable grandson of the Hokage, said the man, Naruto blinked once and turned to the old Hokage for confirmation and received a nod then he turned to face the boy who smirked thinking that he would act like everyone else. I don't care if you're his grandmother so don't think you're getting any VIP treatment from me, said Naruto before dropping the boy and left the office not noticing the stunned look he was receiving from the boy who left the office leaving the ninja wearing the sunglasses to panic while the Hokage smirked in amusement. Naruto was walking through the village while ignoring the hateful looks from the villagers until he rounded a corner and called out to his stalker, you can come out kiddo since I can tell so far that you want to talk to me, the said person appeared from behind a fence. I expected no less from strong guy like you, I was hoping that you would train me, said the boy a nervous look, Naruto looked at him for a minute and signed. Before I answer that question, let's go somewhere else and talk, said Naruto and lead the boy to small clearing and began to talk to the boy who sat beside him on a log. What is your name as I don't really like calling you kid, said Naruto. My name is Kanoamaru, my grandfather named me after the village but nobody calls by my name, and they always call me honorable grandson, only seeing me as the Hokage's grandson instead of myself which is why I want to be Hokage as soon as possible so that they will acknowledge me for who I am like Ebisu said, said Kanoamaru with a sad look in his eyes. In a way, this guy is like me, people are not seeing him for who he is, I starting to like this guy but I need to give him some advice, thought Naruto before turning to Kanoamaru. I've decided to teach to you, the boy had a look of excitement, but there is something you need to know. There are no shortcuts to being Hokage, a Hokage watches over the village as well as protects the people hence gaining acknowledgement and most importantly, you will have to beat me for the title, said Naruto with a smile, Kanoamaru was surprised at what he said but smiled in return. That was when the ninja now identified as Ebisu appeared. You stay away from the honorable grandson, you have no right to be within his presence for he is the grandson of, he didn't finish the sentence as Naruto had dashed forward and placed a paralysis seal on Ebisu rendering him. Immobile. That seal feeds on my chakra and will not wear off until I go to sleep so you'll be there for a while, giving you time to think about giving stupid advices involving shortcuts in life, said Naruto before walking off with Kanoamaru to training. After a few hours of training, Kanoamaru was able to perform the henge, bunshin and substitution much more easily. Well done, next time we meet, I'll teach you the tree walking exercise as tomorrow is the day I become a ninja, Naruto said, Kanoamaru looked at the blonde with admiration. That's so cool. But I hope you'll have time to come but every once in a while to train or hang out, said Kanoamaru to which Naruto smiled gently. Of course, that's a promise. Let's get you and I know a fun way to do so, just keep this a secret between you and me okay, said Naruto and Kanoamaru and nodded in agreement. Naruto channeled chakra to the bracelet and called out, ride the sky road, a flash of light appeared and faded to reveal boots with two wheels attached to each. 
Naruto bent down and called Konoamaru who climbed on his back excitedly, hang on tight, and then he activated the shoes, taking off at high speed. The duo are later seen speeding through the village riding along the walls, grinding on rails and leaping through the rooftops until finally reaching their destination. Thanks for everything, I've never had so much fun, said Konoamaru. No problem, I'll see you around so take off yourself Kono, said Naruto, the boy had a confused look, Kono is a nickname I've come up for you, he was about to leave but was suddenly hugged. Good night Nizan, said the boy, Naruto was stunned for a moment before giving Konoamaru one of his true smiles and hugged in return. You too o Tuto, he responded before taking off in direction in order to rest for tomorrow. As the sun rises over the hidden leaf village, its rays shine through the apartment of a certain blonde ninja who covers his head in order to continue his sleep while mumbling something about the destruction of the sun, however his sleep was not to be as a certain enemy announces his presence. Beep 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 bee -e -e asterisk crunch asterisk Naruto's hands upon the crushed remains of an alarm clock. Uzumaki 24, alarm clock zero, said Naruto with a smirk as he got up from the bed. Good morning, Kurama and Chinami, good morning Kit, said Kurama with a warm smile. Good morning Naruto-sama, I hope you had a good sleep, said Chinami smiling to which Naruto nodded into affirmation. Yep, today is the day that I get placed into a team, so let's take a shower, put on my new ninja gear, eat a healthy breakfast and then head for the ninja academy, said Naruto looking at the calendar before taking of his pajamas and going to the bathroom with his towel. Due to lack of hot water because the landlord said that demons don't deserve to be pampered, Naruto created some seals to alter the temperature of the shower and he didn't even have to pay the bill for it. After taking a bath, Naruto went to his closet and opened it to reveal his new clothes after clearing out his Kill Me orange jumpsuits and took set out to wear it. Naruto now wears his forehead protector replacing the blue cloth with a black and longer one, a black t-shirt with an orange silhouette image of a fox with a face mask, an orange open hooded vest with black flames, black fingerless gloves with metal plating, brown cargo pants with pockets and black ninja sandals. He also wears his old goggles around his neck, telling Kurama and Chinami that it is a precious gift. Naruto then strapped the Tsukiyatoshi to his back and the Mume Tamanu at his waist. Then he went to cook up a breakfast of fried eggs, milk, and toast and fruit salad. He was able to purchase the groceries while under the guise of transformation jutsu. It's a good thing that I bought fresh milk otherwise I would have had a bad case of diarrhea, said Naruto. True but if it was your old self then that would have been the case, said Kurama with a laugh while Chinami giggled. It's best that you hurry on your way Naruto-sama as you are already late, said Chinami with urgency. No need to worry about that as I've got just the solution for this situation, said Naruto as he jumped out the window of his apartment and to the streets below. During the descent, Naruto sent Chakra to the bracelet and called out, surf the clouds, in a flash of light. A small rectangular platform with a wind design appeared at his feet, it levitated a bit over the ground. Let's ride. Naruto quickly took off leaving a cloud of dust in his wake. While riding through the village all the while surprising the civilians, the images from the hoverboard told him that the more tricks he performs, the faster he goes and with that Naruto began performing stunts. He rode along the walls while jumping from one building to the other to create a combo, then he grinded along the wires of the electric poles and then jumped off while performing spins and flips before landing and the board glowed brightly. Then Naruto went through an alley and saw a wooden plank propped up against a crate and grinned widely before zipping towards it and called out, boost, a burst of energy shot out from the rear thruster of the hoverboard which granted a dramatic increase in speed and launched himself off the makeshift ramp and high into the air. Then Naruto performed a handstand and began to spin fast while calling out the name of his new trick Uzumaki Spiral. And skidded to a stop in front of the entrance to the academy after landing. What do the judges say to the performance? asked Naruto to the tenants within the mindscape. Great timing of performing your tricks, perfect control and balance despite it being your first time so I'll give you a 10, said Kurama while holding up a card with one of its tails. 
I agree with Karamasan, I'm impressed with the creativity, fast reaction, and perfect planning while on the move as well. As the creation of the new trick so I'll also give you a 10-inch said Chinami who was also holding up a card as well. Thanks for the rating, now let's get in before we get into any kind of trouble, said Naruto as he jumped off the hoverboard which disappeared into the bracelet and walked into the building. As he came into the class, Naruto saw that the others had arrived as well, most which he was familiar with. A boy whose head is laying on top of the with his eyes closed and has pineapple-shaped hair is Nara Shikamaru, heir to the Nara clan, he always emits the aura of laziness and also seems to think that everything is troublesome and lacks a serious amount of motivation but Naruto knows that he has the highest IQ in the group. Naruto and Shikamaru would hang out and watch clouds which both find to be very relaxing. His clan can manipulate their shadows to ensnare foes and force them to mimic their movements. He wears his headband around his left biceps. The boy sitting next to him while snacking on a bag of potato chips is Akimichi Choji heir to the Akimichi clan, he is never seen without his bag of snacks but is very friendly to everyone but he is sensitive about his weight so if anyone is to call him fat, he will go on a rampage. He found a kin in Naruto as they both like to eat especially at Ichiraka Ramen or hang out together with Shikamaru. His clan are known for their ability to enlarge parts of their bodies to massive proportions but need to eat large amounts of food for the energy required. He wears his headband as a bandana on his head. The dark raven-haired boy who is brooding at one side of the classroom is Uchiha Sasuke the surviving member of the Uchiha clan. His clan was annihilated by his elder brother and sworn vengeance, he is withdrawn and cold to everyone and is the top rookie of the class. Naruto tried many times to befriend him but all to no avail. His clan possesses an eye technique known as the Sharingan that can copy the techniques of their opponents. He wears his headband on his forehead. The boy who has a puppy sitting on his head is Inazuka Kiba with his dog Akamaru, the heir to the Inazuka clan. Although he means well he has a warped view of women and proclaims himself as an alpha, Naruto would often get into arguments with him. His clan partners with trained dogs for close combat and known to be the best trackers in the village. He wears his headband on his forehead with his hood up. Further down is a girl with a long blonde ponytail whose name is Yamanaka Ino an heiress to the Yamanaka clan, she is an outgoing and spirited but is loyal fangirl to Sasuke. She tends to belittle Naruto believing that he is nothing but trouble. Her clan specializes in infiltrating the minds of enemies to takes control of her body. She wears her head around her waist as a belt. Aburame Shino is the boy with the dark glasses, the heir to the Aburame clan. He is known to never express his emotions along with the rest of his clan. Naruto could barely start a conversation with Shino due to his bluntness. His clan battles using bugs which live within them with the price being chakra for nutrition. Shino wears his headband on his forehead. The girl with the pink hair is Sakura Haruno from a civilian family, she is a loyal fangirl who used to be best friends with Ino but broke up because of their rivalry and whom Naruto has crush on but is no longer sure at the moment, she is one of the smartest in the class despite the lack of physical ability. She wears her headband on her long pink hair. Last but not least is Hyuga Hinata from the prestigious Hyuga clan, she was supposed to be the clan heiress but her father ignored her and it to her younger sister Hanabi. She is very shy and lacks self-confidence because of her father's neglect. Whenever Naruto comes near her, she would blush and stutter or even faint much to his confusion. Her clan specializes in close combat that involves damaging internal organs and chakra points, they also have an eye technique called the Byakugan which allows them to have a 360 view of their surroundings and see the chakra points on the enemies. She wears her headband around her neck. Naruto looked at her and smiled gently to which she blushed scarlet and shyly waved. En Narutokun is looking this way and smiling at me, wait he's wearing a headband which means he graduated after all, I am so glad I can only wish that we would be put on the same team, thought Hinata. Naruto approached Sakura and called out to her. Good morning Sakurakan, greeted Naruto happily, Sakura merely scoffed at the blonde. Naradabaka what are you doing here? 
Only graduates are allowed here and I remember that you didn't pass the examination, said Sakura. Naruto was saddened before explaining how he got here. Well Iruka Sensei allowed me to pass through field promotion and the Hokage approved of it, said Naruto. Well it doesn't matter as there is no way you can compare to Sasukakin even with your new clothes, huffed Sakura, Naruto's tenants were irritated at the Pinket's attitude. Naruto-sama, why does she act this way to you, said Chinami. She's right Kit, this girl has changed too much from when you first met her as she used to be shy like Hinata, said Kurama. I know but there is something weird about her, I sense something else on her, we need to check up on this later, thought Naruto as he continued upwards until he reached Ino. Good morning Ino, said Naruto while the female blonde greeted back. Good morning Naruto, I have to admit that you look good in those clothes, much better than the kill me orange jumpsuit, said Ino as she is on friendly terms with Naruto as well as Choji and Shikamaru. Naruto said his thanks and continued upwards until he reached Hinata. Mind if I sit here? asked Naruto to which the shy Hyuga nodded. Naruto is sitting right next to me, I hope that I don't faint from this, thought Hinata while Naruto watched from the corner. Of his eye. That blush of hers really makes her cute, thought Naruto then Iruka entered the classroom. All right everyone settle down and pay attention while I announce the teams, said Iruka as he began to call out the names and the teams they would be on. For Team 6 will be Nara Shikamaru, Choji Akimichi and Ino Yamanaka, your sensei will be Sarutobi Asuma, the trio looked at each other and smiled at being able to work together as the next Shiki Inocho. For Team 7 will be Inazuka Kiba, Aburame Shino and Uchiha Sasuke and your sensei will be Hitaki Kakashi, Sasuke looked indifferent while Sakura groaned at not being on his team. I have to find a way to steer him away from the path of revenge or he'll end up destroying himself, thought Naruto. And for team 8 is Uzumaki Naruto, Hyuga Hinata and Haruno Sakura, your sensei will be Yuhi Kurinai and Midarashi Enko, Naruto smiled happily. I'm on the team with Hinatakan and Sakurakan, this is great, thought Naruto. I'm with Narutakan on the same team, I hope I can get stronger so that I won't disappoint him, thought Hinata. I can't believe that I'm not on the same team with Sasukakan but rather with the Baka and the shy girl, but why do I feel happy to be with the blonde and why does my neck itch, thought Sakura. Now you will wait here until your assigned sensei arrives to pick you up, I wish you all good luck with your ninja career, said Iruka before looking at Naruto who gave him his true smile and left the classroom. It took a while until a woman approached them. If this is team 8, I am Yuhi Kurinai so please follow me, my kosensei is waiting at the meeting place, said the newly named Kurinai as Naruto, Hinata and Sakura got up to follow sensei to a dango shop where another woman is sitting at the table waiting for their arrival. Now that we are here, let's introduce ourselves with me going first. My name is Kurinai Yuhi, my likes are genjutsu, hanging with my friends, flowers and herbal tea. My dislikes are sexist, rapist, perverts and traitors. I don't feel like telling you my hobbies yet and my dream is to bring out the potential in my team. You're next, said Karinai pointing to the woman next to her. My name is Enko Mitarashi, my likes are Dango, Sake, Snakes and my friends. My dislikes are a certain snake, rapists, perverts and traitors especially a particular one. My hobbies are rated for you guys to hear and my dream is to make a certain trader pay for ruining my life, said the newly named Enko. Naruto looked at her sadly along with Chinami and Kurama. You're up Pinky, my name is Haruno Sakura, my likes are a certain someone who is not on the team, the color pink, drawing and cherry. My dislikes are Naradabaka and Inapig. My dream is to impress a certain someone and reunite with a childhood friend, said Sakura, while Naruto looked sad, Hinata, Kurinai and Enko glared angrily at the pinkette. She said she wants to reunite with an old friend? But she is. Supposed to remember that it was you, said Kurama. Something must have happened to make her forget, said Chinami. We'll check on it later after the introductions, thought Naruto as Hinata was called to introduce herself. My name is Hinata Hyuga, my likes are cinnamon buns, 
pressing flowers and a certain someone looking at Naruto who smiles back at her, my dislikes are perverts, the caged bird seal and people who look down on others. My dream is to get rid of the seal, reunite the Hyuga clan and get the attention of a certain someone, said Hinata. Okay you're the last one up blondie, said Enko grinning at Naruto who smiled back. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, my likes is ramen, music, cooking, training and a few special friends, looking at Hinata and Sakura who had a look of curiosity, my dislikes are the thre minutes it takes to cook ramen, biased people, perverts and traitors. My dream is to the strongest ninja to protect my precious people and the balance of the world, said Naruto. He's different from what the record says about him, he's more serious and calm from the loud ninja who proclaimed to be the future Hokage, thought Kurinai. While the kid has come a long way especially with those swords, they emit a weird vibe, I'm sure Yugao would love to check them out and spar with him, thought Anko. Now that we've introduced ourselves, we will be taking a test and before you ask about it, the previous examination was for preliminary purposes so tomorrow we'll meet at the training ground so don't be late, said Kurinai before they left the shop. Naruto called out to Hinata. Hi Natakan, I want to talk to you alone, said Naruto as the girl blushed at being so close to her crush, they headed to the park. Hi Nataheim, I wanted to tell you that it's good to see you again since that day, said Naruto as Hinata looked at him in shock. He remembers that day, thought Hinata as she thinks back. Flashback in a park, a certain pale-eyed crouched on the floor crying while surrounded by three boys who looked down on her smirking evilly. Look at the weak pale-eyed freak. I can't believe she even brushed past us, said one of the boys who kicked her but was soon pushed aside by a spiky blonde hair boy wearing a t-shirt with an orange spiral and a pair of black shorts. Get away from her. If there is anything I hate then it's bullies so get out of here before I pound you to the ground, said the blonde who took a fighting stance. What are you going to do about it? There's three of us and only one of you, there's no way yo, the boy didn't finish the sentence as a fist connected with his face, courtesy of the blonde, the two boys attacked from both sides and soon there was a scuffle while the girl watched on in surprise at the blonde who came in to rescue her. The three boys got up and run away while tending to their bruises and busted lips, the blonde approached the girl while sporting a black eye and few bruises of his own. Are you okay? Asked the boy to which the girl nodded, that's good, my name is Naruto, what's yours? MMY name is Hinata of the Hyuga clan, said Hinata. So you're a member of that clan then you must be strong with that awesome Kekiai Genkai, said Naruto looking at her with starts in his eyes to which the girl looked sad. I'm not so sure about that, my father say that I am weak and won't amount to anything, said the girl while Naruto had a look of anger. There's no such thing as a weak person, I can tell that you are strong you only need to believe in yourself. Tell you something, let's promise each other that the next time we meet, we will work together to become stronger and prove everyone including your father wrong said Naruto holding up his pinky finger. Okay, I hope that we meet again and thank you for saving me, said Hinata crossing her pinky with his. Goodbye Hinataheim, said Naruto running off while waving at her to which she shyly waved back. Flashback and you remember that day and the promise we made as well right, asked Naruto to which Hinata nodded, I was aware that you were also following me around plus I know that you like me, Hinata blushed scarlet fought hard not to faint from embarrassment when Naruto hugged her, well I like you too and I hope that you'll be my girlfriend, that was it and she finally fainted to which Naruto laughed. Still as shy as I remembered her, said Kurama to which Chinami nodded. True but I can sense great potential from within her, said the spirit. After a while Hinata woke up thinking what happened before was a dream. I see you are awake so what is your answer, asked Naruto to which he received a hug and a kiss to the lips. My answer is yes and I'm happy that you accepted me, said Hinata with a bright smile. Thank you but you should also know everything about me and I hope you can accept me, said Naruto as he told her of the Kyubi the bracelet and his family to which she cried and hugged him tightly. You aren't the fox, you're Naruto, the son of the fourth Hokage and I love you no matter what happens, said Hinata, Naruto began to cry for the first time since he was four years old and held her tightly. 
Thank you, but that biased civilian council might force the CRA on me but I will only marry women whom I fall in love with so I hope that you would be my first, said Naruto. I don't mind much because I know that you will love us all equally, said Hinata as she kissed him again. Thanks, now let's get you home, said Naruto as he focused Chakra to his bracelet. Ride the Sky Road, and summoned the air treks much to the surprise of Hinata, he then carried her in a bridal position. Well done we're off, then he took off at high speed. When they reached the Hyuga estate, Naruto set her down much to her disappointment as she enjoyed the ride since Naruto was performing some minor tricks and stunts with her laughing out loud. Good night and see you tomorrow Hinataheim, you too. Narutokun, said Hinata before walking away with a skip in her step to which Naruto smiled happily. Now to look for Sekurikin I know just the place that she would be, thought Naruto before skating away unaware that a pale-eyed boy with long hair was glaring at him. Naruto skated along the roofs until he reached a small hill close to a lake and saw Sakura standing there looking lost. Sekurikin, I was looking for you, she turned to look at him with disgust. What do you want Naradabaka? You're here to ask for a date well to bad cause I'm going to be the wife for Sasukakin so leave me alone, said Sakura turning away from the blonde. I'm not here for that, you said that you were looking for someone I wanted to help, so can you tell me who the person is, said Naruto, this might confirm my suspicions, Sakura clenched her head as if in pain, I trying to remember but when I try, my head hurts and my neck itches, said Sakura while scratching her neck. Can I take a look? asked Naruto to which Sakura gave a hesitant nod, then he lifted her hair and was surprised to see a seal glowing at the back of her neck. Who the hell would put a loyalty seal and a memory seal on Sakurakin? The memory seal must have sealed away her memories which is why she didn't recognize you back and the loyalty must be the reason for that fangirlish faith in the Uchiha but the person would do this must have been trying to get the Sharingan through procreation, said Kurama. Wait I see something else here. Root hold on didn't Gigi tell us that Root was disbanded years ago so why are they still in operation, I remember that Danzo was the leader of the group. It seems that man is working behind the Hokage's back and must be leaking out information to the other villages, said Chinami with anger in her voice. To involve Sekurikin in his plans, that Warhawk is gonna pay for this, I'll copy these seals for evidence and remove it, thought Naruto as he placed a slip of paper and applied chakra to it and traced out the drawing before speaking to Sakura. Sakurakin someone placed a seal on you and I'm going to remove it, Sakura was shocked at the discovery. Who would put a seal on me, I didn't do anything to anyone, said Sakura looking scared. Don't worry. I can remove it so just hold still as it might hurt, said Naruto before performing some hand seals before placing a finger on the seal, Uzumaki Arts, seal destruction, the seal glowed brightly before fading away, Sakura clenched her head as memories flooded into her mind. Flashback at a hill close to a lake, a girl with pink hair sits near the lake crying with several girls taunting her. Look at that girl with the big forehead. I bet her parents write notes on it while she sleeps, said a girl with the others agreeing. What a freak, I'm sure no one even wants to be her friend or even be her boyfriend, said another girl, they continued laughing until they saw a blonde spiky-haired boy approach. The Pinkette. Hey stay away from the freak. She doesn't deserve anyone to be close to her. The blonde turned to the girls with a look of rage which scared the girls. The person who doesn't deserve to have friends is you. Now get out of here before I lose what little control of my temper I have left, shouted Naruto to which the girls run away like a bat out of hell as the pink-haired girl looked at the blonde in awe. He turned to her with a smile on his face. You can stop crying now, I scared them away and don't listen to what they said about your forehead, by the way my name is Naruto what's yours, asked Naruto with a foxy grin. My name is Sakura, thank you for helping me, said the shy girl. She was surprised that this boy would willingly help her as no one had ever done that. That's a fitting name for cute girl like you, well to tell you the truth, I think you have a pretty forehead as it makes me want to kiss it. Said Naruto blushing while Sakura was sporting a blush of her own. He thinks my forehead is pretty, no one has ever said that to me not even my parents, thought Sakura. 
Well then how about we become friends then, what do you think, asked Naruto and his response was a tight hug from Sakura as she sang thank you repeatedly, since then Naruto and Sakura would meet at the hill and play together, they also promised to always be there for each other no matter what. Flashback end upon remembering everything, Sakura turned around hugged Naruto all the while crying, Narutokun, I'm so sorry I didn't really mean all those things I said and I didn't mean to abandon you, I'm really sorry, said Sakura while Naruto hugged her gently and rubbing her back. It's okay, I knew that you didn't mean to say those things and I still kept to our promise which is to be there for each other. That was why I always cheered you up whenever you felt down. But could you tell me who placed the seal on you, said Naruto although he knew who the culprit is. After I played with you on that day, I went home and saw some ninjas wearing blank masks with a kanji for root as they knocked out my mom and were putting some kind of seal of her neck, I tried to run away but they caught me and I lost consciousness. That's all I could remember until when you removed the seal and my memories came back, said Sakura. Naruto had a look of rage along with Kurama and Chinami. It's official, I'm going to destroy Danzo along with Root, and they have taken it too far. Thought with his tenants agreeing. Securikan, when I go to the next council meeting after the test, I'll remove the seal from your mom but I want you to keep up the act so as to avoid suspicion and alert the group until the Hokage and I deal with them, said Naruto as he hugged her, everything will be alright, I can promise you that, okay but please be careful, said Sakura before kissing him on the cheek and running off while Naruto had stunned look on his face. Will you tell her about us as? Well Kit, said Kurama. Yes but it will be after I deal with Danzo and the civilian council, I can only hope that she doesn't reject me, thought Naruto before channeling Chakra to the bracelet, surf the clouds, and summon the hoverboard. Then he rode home to rest for the next day. The next morning, Naruto had woken up and prepped himself for the incoming test with his teammates. Before moving out, Naruto called out to his tenants. Do you guys sense it too, to which they nodded in confirmation. Yes Kit. I can sense a ninja hiding close by and his emotions are repressed which isn't common among most ninjas, said Kurama. Naruto frowned inwardly, knowing who the ninja belonged to. It must be one of Danzo's root ninja, I remember that Gigi told me that Danzo was supposed to disband his group after the Great Ninja War but it seems he didn't do so, he recruits ninjas and brainwashes them to obey only him into his own personal army. With me being your container, he would also be trying to get me to become his weapon but couldn't as Gigi had been protecting me this whole time, but unless Gigi has solid evidence, he can't do a thing to Danzo but not for long as he has crossed the line involving Sekurikin and her mother in his selfish ambition, said Naruto with anger in his voice. So what is the plan Naratosuma, asked Chinami, she was also disgusted by the selfishness of the Warhawk. I'll summon a clone to follow the ninja to his base of operations and gather any kind of intel which we can use to bring down Root and I have a feeling that the civilian council are involved in this as well, said Naruto as he summoned two clones before him. Okay you will go out and lead the Root ninja away and the other will follow him back to their hideout and get some dirt on them so that Gigi and I will disband them for good this time, okay boss, said the clones at the same time the first one went out of the apartment and upon sensing the ninja follow the clone, the second clone followed closely behind using the stealth training he received from Ryu Hayabusa. You'd better get to the training ground Naratosuma, it's almost time for the test, said Chinami. Okay then, Naruto quickly jumped out of the window to the roof of the next building and focused on the bracelet, ride the sky road, and summoned the air treks and sped towards the training grounds at high speed and was able to arrive with only 10 minutes to spare where he saw that Sakura and Hinata had just arrived as well. Good morning Sakurakin, Hinatakin, he waved happily at the two girls to which they smiled and greeted back. Good morning Narutakun, said Hinata shyly, Naruto frowned inwardly knowing the cause of her low self-esteem and planned to resolve it soon. Good morning Narutakun, said Sakura with a small smile, Naruto noticed that she wasn't too happy and it had something to do with her mother still being under the control of the seal that Danzo put on her. It's great that. You are here early as we have enough time to make a plan for the test, said Naruto to which the girls had a look of confusion, I feel that this test has something to do with teamwork, 
so I need to know the skills that you currently have so that I can formulate a plan, well I can use my Byakugan to see through Jinjutsu and Chakra points, I can also use the gentle fist of my clan but I'm not too proficient in it, said Hinata hoping that it would meet up to his expectations. That's good, I also know the reason why you can't use the gentle fist properly and I'll help you with it after the test. So what about you Sekurikin, said Naruto turning to the pinkette. Well I can use the academy taijutsu and perform low rank genjutsu, I can also set up traps, said Sakura who was angered at herself for wasting her time chasing after someone whom she didn't love instead of training. That's perfect for the plan and don't beat yourself up over what happened back then as you can now get stronger for a better reason, said Naruto who had noticed why she had looked unhappy to which she smiled. Waiting a few more minutes after formulating a plan, the group waited until the two Jounin sensei had arrived. It's good that you brats had arrived early so let's get this test over with as I'm craving for some dango, said Anko grinning evilly but was surprised they weren't even intimidated but were rather glaring back at her, they're different from what the academy report said, I'd watch myself, thought Anko with Kurinai thinking the same thing. Okay then, in this test Anko and I will possess a bell each and your task is to get the bells before noon, you can use any means necessary and whoever doesn't get a bell will be sent back to the ninja academy, said Kurinai which confirmed what Naruto had told them. So that's what Naruto-kun was talking about, the bells are just there to drive us apart to work alone. Well no one is going to separate me from Naruto-kun this time, thought Hinata. Just like Naruto-kun said, I'm sure that the other team are facing the same kind of test but in different forms. I've already wasted many years not being with Naruto-kun and I am not going to waste any more, thought Sakura. With that, the test starts in 3.2.1.go, said Anko before throwing out a smoke bomb as the senior ninja took off in different directions. Okay guys, let's commence with the plan, said Naruto, the girls nodded and split up in pursuit of the teachers. Anko was keeping an eye out for the genin when she quickly backflipped to avoid a fireball from above as Naruto descended. That's impressive brat but it will take a lot more to surprise me, grinning at the blonde who grinned back which slightly unnerved her as her gut is warning her to be careful around him. He quickly dashed at her in a zigzag pattern to throw her focus off which worked when he leapt at her, flying kick, he called out before landing a powerful kick which sent her flying back before recovering. Just in time to avoid a punch from the blonde, what's with this kid? He fights almost on par with a jounin or maybe higher. Anko jumped back to create some distance and was relieved that Naruto didn't pursue. You're pretty good but don't get ahead of yourself shadow snakes, snakes shot out of her hands towards Naruto who went through a set of hand seals, wind style, typhoon dance, he began to spin which made hover a feet above the ground as razor sharp wind began to surround him. The snakes ended up getting shredded by the wind and Naruto headed in the direction of Anko who went through her own set of hand seals, fire style, grand fireball, and launched a large fireball at him thinking that it would just burn him a bit but was surprised at what he did next. Water style, whirlpool dance, the wind was replaced with water that reduced the fireball to nothing but steam, how many affinities does this kid have? I've never seen those jutsu in the ninjutsu records before, though Anko. Anko sensei if you're wondering why you have never seen these jutsu before? Well it's because I created them myself and much more, I can teach them to you after the test so look forward to it, said Naruto with a smile as Anko looked at him with her jaw open in shock. It looks like she will take you more seriously now that you've told her kit, said Kurama while laughing at the look on the kunoichi's face. Chinami was giggling at the scene as well. All right then let's continue, shadow kick. Naruto's body glowed green and zipped towards Anko while launching a kick which connected but she burst into smoke revealing a log, she used a substitution jutsu, he was stunned for a moment when he heard the sound of kunai being thrown at him, Naruto quickly gripped the hilt of Mume Tamanu, secret arts, quick draw and drew it out and then returned it to its sheath as the kunai were cut into pieces and lay on the ground. Enko who was hiding in the treetops, was stunned at the swordplay of the young ninja. I'd better regroup with Kurinai as I'm not so sure about facing him alone anymore and I remember that he is weak against Genjutsu which must be why he came after me, thought Enko before taking off to join her fellow kunoichi, 
Naruto sensed her leaving and smiled knowingly. She's gone to join Kirin Aizensei just like I thought, everything is going according to plan, I just hope that Hinatakan and Sakurakan are doing okay, thought Naruto. I'm sure that they are doing just as they are following the plan as well, so you must hurry to them in order to commence with the final phase, said Chinami to which he nodded before running after Anko. Meanwhile, Kurinai was hard-pressed as she was engaging Hinata in close combat with Sakura backing her up by either launching Kanai at her or joining in with the Academy Taijutsu. At the beginning, Kurinai tried to ambush Sakura with an illusion but was rather ambushed instead when Hinata attacked from behind and threw her into the clearing where Sakura had set up a trap of explosive tags that she was able to escape with a substitution jutsu, since then she was receiving relentless attacks from the two girls giving her no room to perform a genjutsu. I can't get the opportunity to perform a genjutsu without them pressuring me. If only Anko were here then I would have some breathing room, then at that moment, the said had just appeared in the clearing with Naruto coming close behind. With a glance at each other, the two kunoichi nodded and immediately launched themselves at their new opponents thinking that they now have the advantage being together but failed to notice the smirks on the faces of the three genins. Right as they were upon them, Naruto called out, Hinata, Sakura do it now. Immediately appeared before Kurinai who was unable to react as she was struck in her chakra points resulting in paralysis while at the same time Naruto appeared before Anko and slapped a piece of paper on her arm which glowed brightly and she fell to the ground unable to move just as the timer rang. Well done on capturing us but now which one of you will go back to the academy while the others continue on their career? asked Kurinai after recovering from the attack along with Anko after Naruto removed the seal. You will have to wait for a new team as we will return to the academy since we are not choosing anyone, said Sakura as she threw the bells at the feet of the two Jounin much to their surprise before smiling at the Genin. Then if that's the case then you all pass as the true purpose of the test was teamwork, said Enko with a smile especially at Naruto who smiled back. Now that is over with, could you explain how you were able to get the bells from us? Well I had Sakurakan and Hinatakan engage Kirin Aizensei as they could defend against Genjutsu while I face you in battle, I intended to pressure you in order to force you to team up with Kirin Aizensei. When you met up with each other and tried to switch opponents, I performed a substitution jutsu to surprise you by using a paralysis seal on you and Hinatakan to render Kirin Aizensei immobile by striking her chakra points, said Naruto, the two Jounin were shocked at how perfect the plan was with no error or risk. But where did you get those seals from? I'm sure that they don't sell at shops for genins except Chunin to Umbu ranks, said Kurinai. Well that's easy because I made them, I have a talent for creating seals as well as cracking them, said Naruto, he noticed that Enko was looking at him with a pleading look in her eyes to which he nodded, she looked at him with hope. Well then, We'll meet up at the Hokage Tower in the next two days for our first mission so until then congratulations on passing the test and welcome to the world of Shinobi, said Kurinai with a smile as she left with Anko leaving Naruto with Hinata and Sakura. I'm so glad to be on the team with you guys, said Sakura happily, and I'm happy to be. With you, now I can make up for the mean things I did to you, madame too, said Hinata, now that I'm with Naruto, I can get stronger with him and prove everyone wrong, same here, but there are some things I need to reveal to you especially to you Sakurakan but that will be after I deal with the current issue at hand, said Naruto to which Sakura nodded, knowing what he was talking about. Okay Narutokun, I'll wait for you until then, said Sakura who hugged him before going home, Hinata also hugged him before returning to her estate. I hope that Sakurakan would accept me like Hinatakan did, thought Naruto. I'm sure her feelings won't change even when she hears of your condition, said Chinami. She's right Kit, now let's get to the Hokage's office to wait your clone to return with the intel from Danzo's hideout and don't forget to help Anko before then, I'm sure you know where to meet her, said Kurama. Sure thing, said Naruto before focusing on the bracelet, surf the clouds, and summoned the hoverboard and rode towards Area 44 also known as the Forest of Death. Upon arriving at the location he saw Anko waiting at the entrance. Sorry if I kept you waiting, so how was the meeting with the Hokage? 
It was interesting as everyone kept trying to deny that you were able to pass the test and three poor suckers broke the third Hokage's law got a one-way ticket to the afterlife although Kakashi was still upset that he didn't have you on his team, said Anko with a smile. I can't blame him as he is my godbrother and I also know that he was dog and you were snake from Umbu, said Naruto, Anko was surprised at how he figured it all out. If you're wondering at how I figured it all out well it's because the fourth Hokage and I look alike, I'll also never forget the people who helped and now it's my turn to help you, are you sure? Not even Jiriyazama could remove the cursed seal, said Anko who looked anxious to which Naruto placed a hand on her shoulder to calm her down. I'm sure of it, just try to relax as it might hurt a bit, said Naruto. After Anko took off her jacket, he performed a set of hand seals then his right hand glowed white, he placed it on the seal and called out, Uzumaki Arts, Cursed Exorcism, then he removed his hand and saw the seal release black smoke before disappearing as Anko fell to the ground panting heavily. I I is it gone? asked Anko in a shaky one, Naruto merely smiled and brought out a mirror for her to see that the seal was truly gone, she began to cry and then hugged the blonde all the while muttering thank you repeatedly, thank you for freeing me freeing me from his curse. I thought that I would never be free from him, it's okay, after all it is least I can do for the person who always protected from the mob, said Naruto with a foxy grin as he was released from her embrace. Actually, there is something I've always wanted to tell you, said Enko who began to fidget shyly while blushing. Well I've always had a crush on you since the day you saved me from a group of rapists, ever since then I've always been watching over you, she must be that girl whom you saved back when you were five years old from those men, said Karama to which Naruto nodded. Thank you for having feelings for having feelings for and I would gladly return those feelings but you must know that I am the CRA act which means that you'll have to share me with other girls, said Naruto, he was then embraced by Anko. I don't mind as I know that you will love all of us equally, said Anko with a smile. All right then, I have to get to Gigi's place for a private meeting so I'll see you tomorrow, said Naruto who waved goodbye before riding towards the Hokage Tower. Then he knocked on the door and entered to see his surrogate grandfather working on the paperwork, Good evening Gigi, I came to discuss something with you, ah hello Naruto, sure I have time, anything to distract me from this blasted paperwork, said Saratobi with a smile. Well it concerns Danzo and his root ninjas as one of them were following me around, I sent out a clone to follow him to their base to get some intel as they had placed a seal on Sakura and her mother which was why she was against my well-being, said Naruto presenting the copied seal as Saratobi was shocked at first but then became serious. Are you sure your clone can do it? This is different from sneaking into Umbu headquarters during one of your pranks as Danzo never leaves a trail behind, said Saratobi. I know which was why I had my clone use this, Naruto focused on the bracelet, honor among thieves, the bracelet glowed and faded to reveal Naruto holding a cane with a golden hook, along with my stealth training, I can use this to steal items without anyone not even an elite knowing and I'm sure that my clone would arrive any minute from now, at that moment, Naruto's clone came in through the window holding a large brown envelope, I've brought in the intel and you won't believe things that bastard has done, let me dispel to give you my memories, said the clone as he placed the envelope before disappeared, Naruto blinked once and then had a look of rage and slammed his fist on the table. That no good, blackheart bastard. And T.O. think that they call me a demon, shouted Naruto. Wanting to find out why he was so angry, Saratobi opened the envelope and read the document only to mirror the same look of rage. As turns out, Danzo had taken the eyes of the Uchiha clan members during the massacre, giving information of the village to other villages, lied to Jiraiya and Tsunade that Naruto died during the Kyuubi's attack, plans to brainwash the heirs of the clans and was planning for a coup with the help of the civilian council. Umbu, he shouted, the ninja appeared before him, gather the rest of your team for we are going to destroy Root, then he put on his ninja gear and soon the group led by headed to where Danzo's hideout, what is your plan? Naruto? Hold on, said Naruto as he summoned 200 of his clones, then they focused on their bracelet and called out, lock and load, 
then there was a bright glow which faded to reveal all of them each holding a heavy machine gun, all right the first hundred will surround the perimeter and make sure that no one escapes, fifty of you will serve as support for the umbu and the rest of will be with me and the hokage for assault. Don't mess this up are we clear? Sir yes sir. With that they all raided the base, completely take the root ninja by surprise, they tried to fight back but were easily taken down clones as they launched missiles, bombs, bullets and flamethrowers along with the Umbu squad. Whoa this kid is a one-man army, I hope that we can get him on the squad after this, said an Umbu wearing tiger mask. He has already been put in a team but I'm sure that I can get him a special position, said the captain of Umbu who is wearing a dragon mask. Soon the base was overrun and Naruto had found the old warhawk hiding behind a sealed room. He thinks he can hide from me? Well he's in for a surprise, said Naruto as he brought out a pack of explosive tags, gg how much explosive tags is this gonna take? Sarutobi had a thoughtful look. I'm sure it's no more than twenty ounces, said the professor. What? I hate the metric system. Can't you put it in much simpler terms, asked Naruto, Sarutobi, and the umbu thought deeply which annoyed him, you know what? Forget it, I'll just use all of the tags, then he placed the tags all over the door, fire in the hole, everyone took cover as there was a huge explosion as the smoke cleared, everyone peeked in to see Danzo laying on the ground all bloodied and the right sleeve torn to reveal the Sharingan embedded in his arm. You have to admit, the explosion was pretty cool, to which they all nodded then they tied up Danzo and took him to prison while Naruto went home to rest and attend the meeting tomorrow. What a day ha Naruto, said Kurama with Chinami nodding in agreement. Indeed from the test, the removing of the cursed seal from Ankosan to the disbanding of Root, you definitely need a good night rest for tomorrow, said the spirit. I know so I'll see you guys tomorrow so good night to all of you, said Naruto before falling asleep. Within the mindscape, Chinami was staring intensely at the fox who was trying to avoid looking at the spirit. When are you going to tell him the truth? I want to tell him but I'm afraid of what will happen I tell him, said Karama. You'd better tell him soon or you'll regret it when it's too late, said Chinami before walking away. Karama laid down to sleep not before muttering out a name, Narutakun, it was a fine morning as Naruto had woken up from his bed prepared a breakfast that consisted of French toast, fresh fruit, cup ramen and orange, it took an epiphany from Karama and Chinami make him realize that his poor lack of nutrition is the reason why. He wasn't getting any taller but who can blame him when he has most of the shops refusing to sell any groceries or charging high prices when he tries to purchase from them because of their bigoted nature. Well, all of that will come to an end soon after Gigi and I have dealt with the civilian council today, thought Naruto as he put on his clothes. Indeed Naratosama, the time has come for those people to pay for the crimes that they have committed against you and the villagers as they were unaware that they were deceived, said Chinami. I agree with her kit, but I'd advise that you keep your lineage a secret until you are promoted to Chunin so as to show your potential enemies that you are not to be trifled with, said Karama from within the mindscape. Thanks for the advice Karama, I'll be sure to tell Gigi after the meeting, said Naruto, after he had strapped on the two Muramesa blades unto himself there was a knock on the door. He went open it to see a female ANBU with purple hair and wearing a cat mask. Yuzumakasen, Hokage has sent for you to appear at his office, said female ANBU, she then had a look of curiosity, though it's not seen behind the mask, when she saw the swords and wondered when he took up Kenjutsu. A.H. Katchan, it has been a long since we last met, said Naruto happily, she was one of the people who were assigned to protect him from the mob and became quite attached to her, sometimes they would eat ramen at Ichiraku's on his birthdays along with dog. Just give me a moment so I can lock up then I'll follow you to Gigi, after locking the door, they were on their way to the Hokage Tower. Naruto could sense that she had been taking glances at the swords on him. It looks like you want to know about the swords which I'm possession of, right Kat-chan? Kat was surprised for a moment before nodding to him. I've been wondering about those swords as they feel different from all the other blades and how you came into possession as I've never seen you practice kenjutsu ever since I had been watching you, said Kat. Naruto considered for a minute but decided to tell her as he trusts her. 
Have you heard the name Muramesa, Kat-chan? asked Naruto, Kat's eyes widened in surprise from behind her mask as she being a sword master has ample knowledge of anything relating to swords. You mean those swords which once drawn will never return to its sheath until it draws blood. But I heard that anyone holds wields one will be cursed with bloodlust so how could you be able to wield them without being afflicted with the curse, asked Kat. That would be because I am a user of the Oboro sword style, anyone that is taught this style will develop an immunity to the curse of the Muramesa blades and can wield them without any repercussions, said Naruto, Kat was shocked at what she had just learnt as well as excited at crossing swords with someone who uses an unknown style. Maybe one of these days we could spar if that is all right with you. Use a asked Kat with a hint of anticipation in her voice. Please call me Naruto as I am not a fan of formalities and I would be glad to spar with a beautiful lady at any time, said Naruto with a foxy grin causing the kunoichi to blush from the smile and compliment. Soon they had arrived at the tower and entered the Hokage's office to see the third Hokage battling with his greatest adversary paperwork. Good morning, Gigi. I'm here just like you told me, said Naruto waving to his surrogate grandfather. My morning isn't exactly good but I'll take what I have, I've checked through the files from Danzo's hideout and had gotten enough evidence to punish the civilian council and replace them with much better ones but I've noticed that my former teammates Hamura and Koharu weren't included in the files but they were against your well-being, said Saratobi while thinking deeply. We'll find out when we have the meeting with the council but there is something I'd like to do first, could you bring Sakura Haruno and Mabuki Haruno here, said Naruto, Saratobi raised an eyebrow wondering why he would want Haruno as he was aware that she is one of the people who hated Naruto. Of course, Kat brings Sakura and Mabuki Haruno here, said Saratobi, Kat nodded in affirmation and body flickered out of the office, after a few minutes she returned with Sakura and a woman who looks like the older version of her. Lord Hokage why did you send for me and my daughter and why is that thing here? I thought you should have killed it when we had the chance, said Mabuki looking at Naruto with hatred in her eyes, Sakura was shocked at how her mother looked at Naruto with anger and wondered why she along with most villagers hated the blonde. Actually, Naruto called you here along with your daughter for an important matter, said Saratobi who was getting irritated at how she was treating the boy. The woman turned to glare at the boy. What do you want from me brat, she sneered, Naruto looked at her with sadness as he knew that all that she did was unintentional. I'm going to free you from the corruption of Danzo, so please forgive for what I am about to do, said Naruto, he produced two shadow clones who quickly ran at the woman and held her down, then Naruto went behind and raised her hair and sure enough the seal was present behind her neck, Gigi, Sakura come and take a look at this, the said people approached and when they saw the seal. Sakura began to cry and Saratobi see that in anger. Naruto please get rid of the seal as I don't want to see it again, it had been reminding me of the bad things I had done to you, said Sakura amidst tears. Naruto nodded and performed the hand seals causing his right index finger to glow before placing it on the seal and calling out, Uzumaki Arts, seal destruction, just like with the seal on Sakura. The seal disappeared from the skin Mabuki clenched her head in pain as the repressed memories were released and soon after she began to cry. I'm so sorry Yuzumaki-san, I never meant to do plan all those attacks on you. It was all done by Danzo, he wanted to turn you into his own personal weapon and the civilians were part of it. I was against what they were doing but Danzo sent his root ninjas to capture my daughter and me and placed those seals on us, we were somehow aware of what we doing but couldn't stop ourselves. It was like a bad dream with no way of waking up, please forgive us for what we did, said Mabuki kneeling on the ground and bowing to Naruto who was looking a bit uncomfortable, while Sarutobi and the ANBU nearby were getting angrier at the civilian council. Kid I can sense the sorrow and remorse from her, she truly didn't mean to do all those things back then, said Kurama with Chinami nodding in agreement. Naruto walked to the pink-haired woman and raised her from the ground while smiling at her. I had forgiven the village a long time ago as they were grieving over the loss of their loved ones, plus I know that Sakura inherited her kindness from you who is her so I can't bear ill will towards you, the two pinkets were stunned at how kind-hearted the boy is and hugged him while repeatedly saying thank you with the third Hokage smiling. 
Minato and Kushina would have been proud of their son if they were alive, thought Sarutobi, Naruto will you tell them of your secret? I hope that you are making the right choice as it's ranked for your protection, Naruto took a deep breath and nodded in affirmation, I'll tell them as I can trust them and with everything they have been through they deserve to know why they were involved, he turned to the Pinket especially Sakura, Sakurakan what do you know of the night when the Kyubi attacked the village? Sakura thought deeply before answering, I was told that the fourth Hokage killed the demon and died in the battle, what does it have to do with you? She noticed that Naruto had a look of fear in his eyes. Well what they told was wrong, the Kyubi is a constructive chakra with a sense of being which can't be killed, and the fourth Hokage couldn't defeat it so he had to seal it away into baby that was born on that night. The baby whom he sealed it into was me, Sakura and Mabuki were shocked at what they heard. So that was the reason everybody mistreated you, they thought you were the fox reincarnated but why did the fourth seal it into you, said Sakura with Mabuki nodding in agreement, Naruto looked at them sadly. He couldn't bring himself to use the child of another parent for the sealing, whom would be better to entrust the power of the fox and the protection of the village than to his own son, said Naruto. Soon the eyes of everyone except Sarutobi widened in realization of who he truly is. You mean that you're, said Sakura with shock. Yes, my father was Minato Namikaze the fourth Hokage and my mother was Kushina Uzumaki the Red Death, Gigi gave me my mother's name to hide from my dad's enemies, said. Naruto, when he finished talking, Sakura hugged him again while crying with her mother joining in the embrace. So he's Kushina Sensei's son, which must explain why Hokagesima assigned me and dog to watch over him, I will definitely protect your son Kushin Essensei, thought Cat. I won't view you any differently, you are not the fox but its container and you are the one whom I fell in love with all those years ago and I won't abandon you ever again, said Sakura with determination. Thank you Sakurakan, but I need to tell you that I fall under the CRA which means that I have to take in multiple wives, already I have two girls who are in love with me but I promise to love all of you equally, said Naruto nervously but he was surprised when Sakura kissed him on the lips. I don't mind Naruto-kun, I know that you have a big heart as long as they love you for who you are then I'm okay with it, said Sakura with a loving smile. I also don't mind as long as my daughter is happy Naruto-kun, said Mabuki with a happy smile. Kat then stepped forward before the third Hokage although he knew what was on her mind. Hokagesima, I seek permission to reveal my identity, said Kat much to Naruto's curiosity. I grant you permission although I should have told you from the beginning but the risks were too high, said Sarutobi sadly, Kat nodded before taking off her mask to reveal a beautiful face which caused Naruto to blush from looking at her. My real name is Yugao, I was a genin under your mother back then and I had promised to watch over her child when she was to give birth but I didn't know that it was you so I seek your forgiveness, said Yugao but Naruto shook his while smiling. There is nothing to forgive Yuganichan as we are all family, said Naruto who was embraced by the Kunoichi. It seems good fortune has finally appeared to you Naruto after all the suffering you have been through, thought Sarutobi, then he coughed to gain their attention, I think it's time to deal with the traitorous civilian so let us head to the meeting room, everyone nodded in confirmation and left the office in direction of the meeting room. Soon they had reached their location and entered to see that both the shinobi and civilian council had already arrived and are sitting on opposite sides, Mabuki went to sit at her seat at the civilian side with a grimace while the third Hokage took his seat with Naruto standing in front of the desk. Naruto took a glance at the shinobi council to see the clan heads smiling at him with the exception of Hayashi Hyuga and Shibi Aburaim while the civilian side with the exception of Mabuki were. Glaring at him openly with hatred but Naruto knew their true reason aside from the Kyubi attack. Sarutobi, why did you call this meeting and where is Danzo, said Hamura. Indeed, sometimes I think he would make a better Hokage than you, said Koharu which angered the shinobi side and caused the civilian side to smile. Naratosama, I sent some. Sort of foreign chakra upon those two which doesn't belong to them, said Chinami. It must be some sort of genjutsu which Danzo must have used with his stolen Sharingan, should be able to break its hold on them, thanks for telling me Chinamakan, thought Naruto, the said spirit smiled happily at being while Kurama snorted in jealousy. 
Naruto began to perform hand seals which caught everyone's attention. What are you doing brat? Trying to destroy us like the monster you are, said a fat councilman, Naruto ignored him and quickly dashed to the two advisors and placed an index finger on their foreheads and called out, Kai. Then they felt disoriented and shook to clear their heads before turning to Naruto smiling. Thank you for releasing us from the genjutsu, said Koharu, surprising everybody at what she said. What do you mean by genjutsu, asked Shikaka Nara with the other clan heads wondering the same thing. It's related to why Danzo isn't in this meeting as he is being interrogated by Ibiki for his treachery and the continuation of Root despite its supposed disbandment, said Saratobi shocking the shinobi and the civilians to sweat which Naruto noticed and grinned like a mischievous fox. What do you mean Hokajesima, how were you able to find out about this, asked Inoichi Yamanaka. Naruto had discovered a loyalty and memory seal placed on Sakura and Mabuki Haruno which put them under Danzo's control and removed them, then he traced them back to their hideout and collected evidence which was sufficient enough to raid their base and execute them as well as detain Danzo, said Saratobi. Immediately the civilians began to protest but were silenced by the killer intent by the old Hokage but one of them refused to back down. How could you believe this demon as he is obviously trying to deceive you? shouted a certain civilian but no sooner had he spoken than his head fell from his body, everyone turned to see Naruto sheathing Mume no Tamanu and were surprised. I didn't even see him move, just how strong he has become, thought Hayashi as he looked at the blonde ninja. He broke the third Hokage's law, besides it won't change anything as they are all going to be executed, said Naruto which made everyone wonder what he meant, Gigi could you show them what we found? Saratobi nodded and passed the files to the clan heads, as each of them read the files, they began to emit large amounts of killer intent which was directed towards the civilian council, Mabuki had gotten up from her seat and stood beside the shinobi council. It was when the civilians realized what those files were and began to shake in fear while Naruto grinned which was mirrored by Kurama and Chinami. All I can say is what goes around comes around and it's your turn to play the piper, my thoughts exactly, ANBU please sent them to Ibiki and tell him that they are his dessert, since Danzo is the main course, said Saratobi with a grin similar to Naruto's when he was about to plan a prank. Immediately, Sever ANBU appeared behind the civilians and body flickered them away. Now that they are gone, we have other matters to settle, what other troublesome stuff are we going to deal with, asked Shikaku with a bored expression on his face. It is time for me to reveal Naruto's lineage after so long, said Saratobi much to the confusion of the clan heads as they wondered what kind of lineage he has. What do you mean Hokajesima? Isn't Naruto an orphan? asked Chuza Akimichi with the others nodding in agreement. Surely you who are close to Minato should know that he couldn't possibly use anyone's child for the sealing aside from his own child, just take a closer look at him and find your answer, said Saratobi when everyone looked at Naruto and realized that if they took off the whisker marks, then they will see a mini fourth Hokage. If he is Minato's son then who is the mother, said Hayashi standing from his seat. His mother's name was Kushina Uzumaki whom we all know by her nickname Red Death, said Saratobi. You mean he is Kushikan's son and you didn't tell us? Why? We could have taken care of him, shouted Tsum Inazuka angrily. I didn't tell you all because it was to protect him from his father's enemies especially Iwagakure and Kumogakure as they would have targeted him for revenge, said Saratobi. Gigi before we go any further, I've decided to keep my lineage a secret until the Chunin exams, said Naruto. Why? Wouldn't you want it to be known as soon as possible, asked Inoichi, Naruto shook his head in negative. That's because I'm not yet strong enough to protect myself as well as my precious people as I'm in the CRA, so I need to train more until then, said Naruto to which they nodded in agreement, very well, we won't announce your lineage until the Chunin exam, you may leave Naruto, said Saratobi, Naruto bowed to the council, what's left of them, and left with Sakura close behind. You are definitely going to change things around here Naruto, when Naruto and Sakura left the tower, they met Kurinai, Anko, and Hinata who were on their way to the Hokage's office, Naruto, Sakura. What are you guys doing here? asked Kurinai with curiosity with the others mirroring the same look. 
Sekurikin and I just came from a meeting with the council which has something involving me, said Naruto, he noticed Anko frown and knew that she hated the civilian council, let's just say that we have cleaned out the trash, I'll tell you the rest of the story at where walls don't have ears, they nodded realizing the importance of what Naruto was about to tell them. Later on, they had arrived at his apartment although they were angered upon seeing the writings on the wall like demon, monster, devil, and others but Naruto ignored it and unlocked his room, when they entered the room, Kurinai and Anko were surprised to see that the room was well kept despite the outside being so appalling. Now that we are all here. I need to tell you about my lineage, then he told them about his family and what happened on the night of the attack, they were sad at the suffering which he went and angry at the village for their cruelty to the point of wanting to be violent had not Naruto convinced them otherwise as he had forgiven them. Why did you stop us from giving them the punishment that they deserve, said Kurinai angrily as she has a small spot for children and saw this as child abuse. That's because they were deceived as well by Danzo as well as the corrupt civilian from the very beginning, said Naruto and he told them of what happened at the meeting, when he finished speaking he saw Anko rushing out of the door, Ankakan, where are you going? I'm part of the torture and interrogation department so I'm heading over there before Ibiki breaks all of them, said Anko with a sadistic grin which sent shivers down their spine. Then Kurinai turned to Naruto. About you being in the CRA, I'm okay with it as long as the girls are happy but if I find out that you hurt any of them, you will have a lot to answer to me, said Kurinai with a stern glare making Naruto shake in fear and nod frantically much to the amusement of Sakura and Hinata. All right then, we will meet up at the Hokage Tower to get assigned to a mission tomorrow so don't be late, with that, Kurinai left for her home. It's time for us to go as well, said Sakura with Hinata nodding in agreement. Naruto then got up and kissed them on the cheek each causing them to blush. I hope to see you tomorrow my himes, said Naruto with a foxy grin and received a kiss on the cheek from both of them before they left. Naruto was stunned for a moment and then collapsed on the bed with a happy smile. As he got ready to sleep, he called out to his tenants, Good night everybody. Good night Narutosama, said Chinami. Good night Narutokun, said Kurama with the last part being a whisper but didn't know that Naruto had heard it. What did Kurama mean by kun? It must have been a slip of the tongue, thought Naruto before drifting off. This is crimson sight, are all units present and accounted for, said Kurinai, this is Lamia, report your current positions, said Anko, crimson sight, Lamia, this is Maelstrom in position from the west, target is in sight, said Naruto hiding behind a tree. This is Lavender, I have the target within my visual, said Hinata perched at the top of a tree with her Byakugan active. This is Cherry Blossom, ready to support Maelstrom, said Sakura hidden in a nearby bush. Noted, engage the target with caution and capture with little force, said Kurinai. As stated by Crimson Sight, prepare to move in 3. 2, 1. Now, said Enko immediately. Naruto jumped from behind the tree with Sakura bursting from close behind as they charged at the target, but it was aware of their presence as it jumped away from Naruto towards a tree and bounced off it then twisted itself in midair to evade Sakura who jumped at it before running off at high speed. That cat is good at running away, said Sakura picking herself from the floor, dusting her clothes before contacting Hinata, what is the current location of the target? The target is currently moving towards the streets in a zigzag pattern, said Hinata. As Sakura and the other sensei listened, Naruto was deep in thought. There is more to the cat than meets the eye, many genin teams say that the cat is able to evade capture even from Jounin, but I have reasons to believe that there is another meaning to this, don't you think so? thought Naruto to his tenants. You could be right about that kit, most humans think animals don't have much intelligence but they will be surprised at what they can do, said Kurama. Kuramasan is right Naratosama, there is always a reason for everything so the same could be said for the actions of the cat, said Chinami. I'll just have to chase after it and observe its actions to confirm this theory of mine, thought Naruto then he got up, I'm going after it as I am the fastest amongst us, are you sure Narutokun? I've heard that even Jounin have trouble catching it, said Sakura worriedly. I know, but there is something I want to figure out, 
I'll meet up with you guys at the Hokage's office, said Naruto before taking off at high speed towards the location that Hinata reported. Meanwhile with the cat, she was standing at the top of a light pole looking around for her pursuers, having seen no signs of them, she signed in disappointment, looks like this group has failed to meet up to my expectations as well, maybe the next group might be able to do better, she turned leave when she heard someone land near and turned to see the blonde-haired kid with the whisker marks on his cheeks. She noticed that unlike the other ninjas who would look at her with anger or annoyance, he was looking at her as if trying to figure something, I wonder if this boy could be the one? He seems different from the others but I'd better make sure, when Naruto landed near the cat, he noticed that she had a look of disappointment before he showed up which further convinced him that something is going on, after looking at each other for about minute, she took off with Naruto in pursuit. The cat was weaving through the crowd quickly with her small size and turned to see that the blonde was using sidesteps and short dashes to keep up with her much to her surprise as most ninjas would. Use the roofs to avoid the crowd, then she ran to the trees and began jump on the branches and changing directions expecting to lose him before stopping at the edge and was again surprised to see the blonde ninja land before her and watch her again with a calculative gaze. This kid truly is different from the other shinobi before him, he could be the one but let's see if he can pass this last test, she thought before taking a pouncing position and bringing out her claws. Naruto took a defensive stance when he saw the cat stood poised to attack and was stunned when he saw something unexpected. I can't believe this, it can use chakra without undergoing training like the other ninja dogs, he thought with shock. I thought as much when I sensed the level of chakra she had, you'd best be ready for anything, said Kurama. Naruto nodded in affirmation before turning to face the cat. She quickly dashed at the blonde to slash him with her claws coated in chakra, Naruto quickly applied chakra to his hands and began to block and parry the attacks and was impressed with her speed which must have come from being chased so many times. When she attempted to claw at his face, Naruto quickly took of his jacket and used it to wrap the cat up completely sealing away its movement, when he looked at the cat, he was surprised to see her smiling at him. He is the one, of that I'm sure of it now, thought the cat. Naruto decided to unwrap her from the jacket before speaking to her, completely sure that she could understand him. My name is Naruto Uzumaki and I believe that your name is Tora right, and received a nod from the cat. All those times you were chased, it was a test to find a partner right? Tora nodded again, you wanted to become a ninja animal but wanted a capable partner which you found in me right, another nod, what do you guys think? I think that you should accept as she had waited this long for a partner, said Chinami. I agree with her, I can teach her a few techniques mean for animals like her, said Kurama. If so, then I would be happy to be your partner Tora, said Naruto, Tora climbed to his shoulder and rubbed against his cheeks affectionately, making Naruto smile before heading to the Hokage's tower. When he entered the room, everyone's eyes turned to him and their jaws dropped upon seeing Tora sitting on Naruto's shoulder without being restrained, even Saratobi dropped his pipe in shock upon seeing this as everyone is aware that one cannot capture Tora without suffering any form of damage. After a while of silent staring, everyone in the room did a ram sign and said, Kai, as if to dispel an illusion but it was all real. Naruto could you explain what is going on? asked Saratobi trying to relight his pipe. Well the thing is that all those times that we have been chasing, it was a test which she set up in order to pick a partner, said Naruto again stunning the people around him. You mean to tell me that Tora was testing us this whole time to choose a partner? Am I following you so far? asked Irika. Yeah the reason is because, Tora wanted to be a ninja animal and can even use chakra, why don't you show them? said Naruto. Tora hopped from his shoulder and channeled chakra to her claws and slashed the table, leaving deep cuts to the surprise. Tora dear, do you really want to be a ninja animal? asked Madame Shimji, Tora nodded in affirmation. Then I won't hold you back, I only wish that you would be safe, Tora jumped to Madame Shimji's shoulder and rubbed against her cheek before jumping back to Naruto's shoulder. Don't worry about Tora ma'am. I'll be sure to protect her no matter what, said Naruto assuring the pet owner who nodded before leaving. You can all leave as I can see that we've gone through a lot today, said Sarutobi, 
Squad 8 bowed before leaving the room with Tora riding in Naruto's hood, when they left, the third Hokage signed heavily before mumbling, I'm getting too old for this and Naruto is the main source of it, you're really something Naruto, to actually have Tora who always give her pursuers hell as a partner, it's never a dull moment with you, said Anko with a grin. Can I hold her Naruto-kun? asked Hinata, Naruto didn't answer as Tora jumped from his hood into her arms and began to cuddle, making the girls almost scream out, kawaii, and glomp her. Tora can stay with you for a bit while I go and train, I'll be sure to pick her up later, said Naruto before heading off towards the training grounds, he was aware that someone was tailing him. Upon reaching the grounds, Naruto pondered over what he should train on when Chinami spoke up. I'd suggest that you practice on wielding Tsukiyatoshi, I had noticed that you are a bit slow at swinging the large blade, said the guardian spirit. Thanks for the advice, Chinamican, now I know what to work on today, said Naruto, then he summoned fifty clones that stood in front of him, okay guys, same rules as always, battle royal, and received a, yes boss, from the clones, then he drew out Tsukiyatoshi while the clones drew either of the blades and both sides dashed at each other. Naruto began to slash at the clones while parrying counter strikes, he quickly rolled to the left to evade a downward slash from behind and launched an uppercut which sent several clones into the air, secret art, running slash x3. He blurred through them left and right, sending them higher before finally positioning himself above the clones and brought his blade down stabbing them, bringing both of them to the ground where they puffed into smoke. Five clones jumped into the air at Naruto to slash at him but he had a counter-attack for them, secret arts, flash, he raised his blade in the air and an afterimage of him blurred through them where they disappeared due to the damage inflicted, another group of clones charged in hoping to overwhelm him, Naruto turned to meet them to execute another technique, secret arts, specter blow. Several purple wisps shot out of his blade towards the clones, some of them got hit while the others jumped to evade but the wisps homed in on them and were successful in hitting the clones. Now to end this. Naruto put the blade back into his sheath and called out, Secret Arts, Moonlit Glint, as he drew the blade out, there was a flash of bright light and when it faded, all of the clones were cut up and puffing into smoke. Naruto tossed his sheath into the air and held Tsukiyatoshi out, where the sheath slid into it. Before latching it to his back, just like Kisuk does when finishes a battle in Muramesa, the demon blade, then he called out, you can come out now, I knew that you were watching ever since I came here, he turned to see someone appear from behind a tree, it was a girl who was wearing a pink sleeveless kippa style blouse with red sleeve trimmings and yellow fastening buttons as well as dark green pants, a ninja pouch strapped to her thigh, standard blue ninja sandals and she wears her black hair. In a Chinese style buns with short fringe bangs falling over her forehead protector. Let me introduce myself, my name is Uzumaki Naruto and I graduated this year from the academy, my name is Ten Ten, I graduated from the academy last year, said the girl. It's nice to meet you, but could you explain why you were spying on me when I was training as it might look like you were trying to steal my techniques, said Naruto looking sternly at the kunoichi. No I wasn't trying to steal anything. I was interested in the swords that you have on you as I've never seen them before nor recognized them and was hoping that you would tell me about them, but when I saw you train with your clones, I was stunned at your kanjutsu style, said Ten Ten. The kunoichi speaks the truth, I sense no negativity from her, said Kurama. Naruto nodded agreement. If that is so then I can tell you about them, have you heard of the name Muramesa? said Naruto, Ten Ten raised her eyebrows in surprise upon hearing the name. I've heard of the name from old history books, they are said to be blades that can cut through anything aside from the kuzanaji, but they are also said to be cursed, never to return to its sheath until it draws blood and afflicts the wielder with bloodlust. If those blades are the fabled Muramesa, then how are you able to wield without the curse affecting you, said Ten Ten looking at the blonde ninja as if he is an enigma. The reason would be because of the sword style which I am using, it's called the Oboro style which grants the user an immunity to the curse which allows them to use the Muramesa as they see fit and I am currently the fourth user of the style, said Naruto. Is there any chance that you can teach me? asked Ten Ten with starry eyes. Making Naruto back up a bit because of her enthusiasm. 
I don't know you well enough to trust you with the style plus using any of the secret arts would break the sword unless it's a very powerful blade. But enough about me, what about you, said Naruto. Well I have an interest in all kinds of weapons which led to people and friends giving me the nickname Weapon Mistress although I tend to go overboard when I see a new weapon for the first time, I aspire to be the strongest kunoichi like my idol Tsunadesima of the San Nin 3, said Ten Ten happily. Tsunade huh? She still has a lot to answer for leaving me behind but I'll shelf it for later, thought Naruto before turning to Ten Ten, that's a nice dream to have, how? About a spar between us? Really? I would be happy to spar with you but won't using Muramesa be a bit unfair for me, said Ten Ten a bit wary of the blades. You don't have to worry about the blades as I won't be using them but rather another weapon, so are you ready? asked Naruto. Yes I am, said Ten Ten eagerly waiting for what kind of weapon the blonde ninja would bring out. Since she is a user of all kinds of weapons, I need to match up with her style for offense and defense but what can I use? thought Naruto, then the bracelet lit up and he saw a vision of four figures each wielding different weapons and smiled, thinking that they're perfect. Then he held out the bracelet and channeled chakra to it which drew Tenten's attention and called out, Turtle Power, there was a flash of light and faded to reveal Naruto having nunchucks holstered to both his thighs, a pair of seis at his waist, dual katanas and a bow staff strapped to his back. Remember that Naruto set the Muramesa blades to seal themselves when he summons weapons from his bracelets. Upon seeing this, Ten Ten was shocked and decided to voice out her thoughts where did those weapons come from? I will tell you after the spar, so prepare yourself, said Naruto, drawing out the dual katana and held them at his sides. Ten Ten brought out a scroll and unsealed a pair of kamas, mini sickles, and both ninjas charged at each other. Naruto went in with a cross slash which was deflected when Ten Ten used her commas to grind against the blade and redirected them, throwing him off balance and was dealt a kick to the chest, Naruto quickly recovered and charged in again but this time held his katana in parallel and slashed, Ten Ten jumped back to avoid as she knew that she couldn't block this one, but wasn't expecting Naruto to follow up with a jumping spin kick which connected with her head, causing her to drop the commas, Naruto. Dashed in once again, but Ten Ten quickly unsealed an Kuzurigama, chain sickle, and threw the chain at him. Thinking quickly, he held the katana in a reverse grip and positioned them before him, allowing the chain to wrap around both of them, then he stabbed the blades to the ground before Ten Ten could pull on the chain and closed in on her with the Seis drawn out for close combat. Ten Ten unsealed a pair of Tanfa as a means of defense and both sides clashed again and again all the while attacking and defending, then Naruto went in for a double stab to which Ten Ten raised her Tanfa to block and made the Seis get lodged in the wood holding him in place and launched a side kick with her right leg. Thinking quickly, Naruto raised his left knee to block the kick and letting go of the Seis, spun to deliver a reverse roundhouse kick but Ten Ten leaned backwards and backpedaled to create some distance between them before whipping a green scroll, she unraveled it and bit her thumb drawing a line of blood on it and began whipping it around herself releasing a volley of kanai and shuriken at Naruto. Naruto took out the bow staff it in front of him deflecting the incoming projectiles and dashed at Ten Ten who was now wielding a katana, Naruto began to get an edge on the kunoichi as he continuously twirled his staff around in a 360 spin to keep her at bay before going for an attack which sometimes bypasses her guard. Ten Ten went for a downward slash but Naruto let go of the staff and fell to the ground but raised both of his feet to let the staff land on them and block the attack, then he pushed her back before twirling the staff and kicking it into the air where he bounced to his feet and caught it in his hands. Naruto launched a front thrust but Ten Ten sidestepped and slashed at his hand, forcing him to let go of it but he used a palm strike at her wrist which disarmed her of the katana. After jumping back, both sides smiled at each other. You're pretty good at using those weapons, not many are able to disarm me so many times in a battle, said Ten Ten looking at the blonde. The same could be said for you. You truly live up to your title as I'm really enjoying our spar, said Naruto smirking at the kunoichi, then he took out the nunchucks from the holsters and began to spin them and Ten Ten brought out a staff much to his surprise but stayed on guard. Let's wrap this up, then they charged at each other once more. 
Naruto was really hitting hard and Ten Ten was as experienced with the staff as he is since she was using a strategy similar to his own. Ten Ten held her staff with her hands gripped at one end and swung at his head, Naruto quickly blocked but was surprised when the staff opened up into a three-sectional staff and it slammed into his head forcing him back. Damn! I wasn't expecting that at all, he thought as he shook his head to clear it and quickly rolled backwards to dodge another attack. Then Naruto ran in while spinning his nunchucks, Ten Ten launched another attack but he rolled to the ground, Kawabunga, and began to breakdance starting with a windmill, kicking at her torso. Ten Ten tried to back away but he immediately went into flares which knocked away her staff and sent her falling to the ground, for those who these breakdance moves, check this site out slash top 25 craziest breakdance moves slash, then he jumped up and stood over Ten Ten while spinning his nunchucks, looks like I win, smiling at her before he held out his hand to help her up. Looks like you did, so can you tell me about the bracelet, said Ten Ten after taking the outstretched hand and stood up looking as the weapons glowed and faded back into the bracelet. The bracelet is called the Jigen no Tamashi no Rinku, Dimensional Soul Link, which allows me to summon the weapons and gears of legendary heroes to use in battles, however it can only be used by those of a pure heart and a sense of justice as those with ill intent will have their souls destroyed if they attempt to wear it, said Naruto. That's so cool. To be able to wield the weapons of heroes, I'm. So jealous of you, said Ten Ten with stars in her eyes. She really knows herself when she says she sometimes goes overboard with her love for weapons, thought Naruto with his tenants nodding in agreement, normally it's supposed to be a secret but I feel that I can trust you to keep this a secret, of course, I can tell how important this bracelet, but I hope we can spar every now and then if that's okay with you, said Ten Ten with a hopeful look. Of course, I would be happy to spar with you, said Naruto smiling, but he wasn't expecting the kunoichi to hug him, causing him to blush. Within the mindscape, Chinami noticed Kurama's left eye twitch but chose to keep silent. Outside the mindscape, Ten Ten let go of the blonde, blushing in embarrassment. Sorry about that, anyway I hope to see you again, said Ten Ten running off, Naruto stood there for a while before walking to his home to sleep. Next day, Naruto with Tora riding in his hood as she now stays with him met up with the rest of Team 8 and went to the Hokage's office to get a mission. When they entered the office, they saw the third Hokage looking intently at a scroll before looking up to see them and then spoke up. You have arrived at the right time as I need you to go and serve as backup for Team 7, I've received a message from Kakashi, it seems like their employee lied to them about the mission as they were attacked by Gozu and Meizu, the demon brothers. They were defeated and interrogated, it was revealed that Nami no Kuni was terrorized by a bigato of the Gato Industries plunging it into poverty. Tazuna was building a bridge that would encourage trade relations between the lands but Gato would hire assassins to obstruct them so he sought our help despite the rank of the mission. So I need you to prepare yourselves and set out to assist Team 7 in the completion of the mission, said Saratobi. Understood Hokajesima. We'll get up and set off at once, said Kurinai with Anko nodding in agreement. Don't worry about it Gigi, we'll definitely get the job done, said Naruto raising a thumbs up at his surrogate grandfather, later on the team met up at the gates. Is everyone ready, asked Kurinai receiving an affirmation. Then let's go, then they took off in direction of Nami no Kuni. This mission might get a little tricky, thought Naruto, unaware how right he was in that little thought of his. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. Guys, make sure to help the author by visiting the link in the description. This is Fox Sage, and I'm signing off.